the Nobola. The inhabitants were completing an evil and insane experiment. By manipulating DNA, they created a new race of living beings, humans. They found a place for them to infest the Earth. Those massive creatures can't stop us! <laughs> the first humans were sent to battle, equipped with weapons of mass destruction. Their goal was simple, exterminate the Overlinkses. Only one Overlinks had the courage to strike back.
Hello, hi. Oh, now that's a cat jam, baby. Uh, absolutely. I don't. I don't think there's a more banging piece of video game music. I don't think it exists. And uh, I just worried that some people may not have fully fully experienced it last time. If you'll give me a moment, it is on the YouTube. Happy New Year! Soon enough. There you go. Link link in chat. Uh, so the funny thing about this <clears throat> uh, is that last time. Last time on the stream, uh, I did all that. I never played the game. <laughs> I never actually played the game. I was so overwhelmed that I just couldn't... Uh, uh, well, you know. Like, what? I, we knew that nothing, nothing was going to actually follow that, you know? Um, so, uh, no, I played the Christmas version. I never played the original. Which I think is extremely funny. Um, I played the, I played uh, Interpose Xmas Special, Interpose Xmas Greetings. There we go, which I assume is very similar, but I never actually played the game. But yeah, exactly. Like this, this, listen, it's a theme on this stream that, uh, you know, a game with banging music is not going to have good gameplay, right? <laughs> this is known. <laughs> um, so, you know, we didn't want to... Uh, we, we, we didn't want to go ahead and confirm that. <laughs> um, but, you know, the moment has passed. We're still here, so... Wait, one moment. Yeah, okay, that's... Okay. Uh, that's the thing. I keep thinking about this. Every time I look at the title screen of this game, just like, he's got the gun. But then he's also doing the gun. Also, I muted it. It's still playing the song. Oh. Okay, it's not playing the song. Is it going to start again as soon as I... Yep, there we go. So, compact disc digital audio. Uh... Well, hot shot. <laughs> this picture bangs. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Chell. I like you in Portal. God, this is such hardcore rave shit. Yeah, it's got that. It's got that hard pan uh it's got that hard pan uh amiga energy this might be literally a, a four channel amiga mod um i'm listening i don't think i hear more than two distinct samples at any given moment on either channel so yeah, I really strongly suspect this is a uh, just a four-channel Amiga mod, and those, well, originally on the Amiga, they had to be panned left and right because they were physically wired that way. Anyway, spaceship. The only place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Amiga was the furry computer. Yeah, okay, all right, you've got me there. Yeah. Star Fox voice. Good luck. 
Ooh! Oh, okay, you don't know, but the ship. Ooh, it's got so much inertia. Ooh, it's so heavy. <laughs> uh, the laser sound effects are all on one speaker, and the freaking explosions are all on the other. There we go, that's... Oh. Upgrade. Upgrade, that's right, upgrade. Yeah, it's a, it's a, well, okay. People don't have a good name for these, right? Because shmups go up, so I call it a shmover, or occasionally a schmideways. Acceleration. There we go, we got that. Acceleration. Shield restore. It's got that, what if metal slug was made by Brits? You know? Incredibly clean accent. Dual machine guns. Eh. I don't know what these little blue nipples do. But you can shoot them. It's, as far as I know, shmup is short for shoot em up, but we're not shooting up. We're shooting over. So this is a shmover. Alright, there we go. The last time we saw her, she was in like a Santa outfit. Come on, there's a drop is coming. I know there's a drop. I know it. We're going to sit here for as long as it takes. Yeah, no, Mr. Weapon. Absolutely breathtaking. Jumpsuits bang. Oh no, this is a furry game. There's no getting around it. Oh my god, look at that Garfield look she's got. She wants lasagna. <laughs> I love that Mr. Weapon is a Mac application. Alright, uh... That's right, there's massive inflation in this game. Hell bomb. Everything is extremely expensive. Uh, I guess I'm gonna buy one fusion warhead. And then we're gonna pull the uh, we're gonna pull the handle. Right. That's it, folks! You're fucking broke! <laughs> it's a perfect, uh, perfect gambling, gambling simulation. Microtransactions required. They just... It, the technology wasn't there yet. By the way, I do believe that it picks up the music where it left off, which no game in history has ever done. You pull the lever, it comes up three tails, you're just fucked. Upgrade! Yeah, I love Idiocracy. It's a joke about the guy in there who's 
name is Upgrade. Which is actually a pretty fucking sick rap name. <laughs> Can't believe they got that unlock. <laughs> Ding, and then you don't get any money. Whoa. Well, I probably shouldn't hit those. Well, what, do I just tank it, or... Ah! What the fu- I was supposed to outpace it. By the way, shmup that actually sets checkpoints. Did you know that existed? I didn't really know that existed. Pachinko, that, that bangs. That's really good. Fuck, that's great. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure that one holds as much, uh, as much water, but the second one's not, not the best, but the first one's solid gold. Another thing I like is that you can't just run into a surface, like, you don't die when you do that. Imagine a shmup with quality of life features. You see... This game respects your time. Okay, now what we're gonna do... Whoa! I think if we just take the top lane... Oh god, but it's gonna do more of them, isn't it? Oh, well, no, I guess not. I should probably stop running into enemy ships. We gotta get that Skrilla. Oh wait, but the music is banging! Hang on, I need to adjust the balance. Because the music just decided to go. Approaching shot. Hornet 800. Hornet 800. Uh, 3400, you know what, we'll skip the shop. We don't have enough to buy anything. Oh, I could have bought a shield fix. Nope, nope, those are not pickups. Why did I think these were pickups? The pickups all are spears. Oh, thank God. Oh, good, we got some Kaizo Mario shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah! Why is the music so fucking good? Now, here's the thing. This is not the best shmup in the world, but it definitely doesn't... It definitely doesn't fail the... Or, uh, uh, pass the test of, like, if the music is good, the game will be bad. This game's not bad. At worst, it's just mids. And you have to give it credit for that. Oh, here we go. I think it's my first boss fight in this game. I don't trust that thing. I want that ad gone. Uh, there's no health bars. Where? Where? Oh, all right. Okay, yeah, I love Fantasy Zone. Let's go. <laughs> it's a little remix of the menu music. I'm expecting it to go into more of the title song. Oh, sorry, I have the composer.
Sorry for the dings. That is the composer. And the vocals are by Jonas Groth, who might maybe be the same Jonas Groth that's now playing in... Uh, uh, um, sorry. Uh, Apoptic with Berserk. I don't know. I couldn't find out. God, that's good! It all bangs! It all bangs! Definitely save. <sighs> that did save, right? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, see, it picks up the music where it stops. That's so good. Oh. ready Oh yeah, here comes that solid mod tracker shit. I was gonna say mod file shit, then tracker shit, and then I said mod tracker shit. Are you fucking sorry? Oh! Oh yeah! Uh huh. Yes. Fuck it. <laughs> Come on, we know what we're here for. Oh, that's so good. No, <laughs> I missed the shop. Good luck. Imagine turning the cat jam sign off. MST through K voice, we've got cat jam sign. <laughs> There we go. I was hoping I was going to get that shield restored. Oh, we got the upshot, finally. Well, the upshot is we can fire upwards now. I don't know about a marathon, just there's... 
certain ones we watch at the end of the year. Okay, here we go. See, we don't need to feel bad about the music because it ain't going to restart. It's going to pick up where it left off. This is the same music, right? Yeah. Imagine if it wasn't, though. Imagine if each shop had different music. I want to fucking remix this. By the way, don't you love the interstitial to show you approaching Mr. Weapon? Like, come on. <laughs> Like, get out of here, man. I have to be honest, though. I think I might uh, set up some turbo. Turbo controller nonsense, because my hand's tired. God, come on, though, this goes. Another chance for those who need it. Wait, there's lives? I didn't know that. I really want the auto-tracking minigun, but it's not till later. Oh yeah, this game just does not need to, you know? It just doesn't need to. But it does. I could afford that. Eh, you know what? I'll get all the other stuff. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, there we go. Got that cannon upgrade, and then give me a second. Because doesn't DOSBox support turbo... Or maybe not. Hmm. Does it or doesn't it? I cannot remember. Maybe it doesn't. I, I had it in my head that it supported turbo. Ah, crap. You know, I guess what I could do, now that I think of it, Give me, you know what? Give me a sec. I'm going to be a jerk here. And I'm just going to get, uh, somebody help me out here. Joy to key. Joy to key. That's the one, right? I think that's the, the thing that people use to, or is there something better these days? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get joy to key. I'm going to wire this guy up. I'm gonna take some of the some of the strain off my phalanges. That word just came out of my head, and I have no idea if it was the right word or if I said it correctly. I have not said that word in a long time. Oh, I think I, maybe I did. Uh, okay, let's see. Profile one. Uh, let me set this shit up. Uh, Oh boy, howdy. Um, ooh. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 stick. Uh, okay, it would be POV, right? Yes, the POV. Okay, there we go. POV. Okay, that's up. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's down. Okay, left. And then button one, that's going to be space. Okay, button. Uh, that's going to be Missile, so that's going to be Alt, okay, top one is going to be, uh, Control for switching weapons, and then we're just going to make the right one, Turbo Space, Space, Auto Repeat, uh, what, 20 times a second? I don't know, okay, let's see if that works, Bingo Dingo! All right. I don't know if there's pause, so I can't do much about the fact that my turbo did not work. Why didn't my turbo work? It works once. It says it's supposed to repeat 20 times a second, but it doesn't seem to. Whoa! Yeah, but then it should re-trigger eventually, but it does But it doesn't. Oh, wait, maybe... No, that should... No, that should work. 
Ooh. You know what? Pause does not work, and I am afraid to hit escape. You never know. Wow, that was a really quick uh, next shop. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna open a notepad. Okay, space, space, space. Okay, nope. Yeah, it goes fast. So yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going. Uh, let's do. Let's see. Ten times a second. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, yeah, I guess 20 times a second was just too frequent. That's going to be a lot easier on my digits. Oh, yeah, yeah, you going to do the tempo ramp? Yeah. Oh ho. Yeah. It's real cat jam hours. Listen, I want to get through the game, not challenge myself. This isn't an arcade. Oh, no! Speaking of which... You know, Turbo kind of breaks the game. <laughs> oh, you know what? You don't get to pick up money from enemies you've already killed before. Did they really track all that state? God, it's that feel-good chord progression that you just don't hear in the EDM anymore. It's old school, man. Yeah, the turbo is not preventing me from uh, uh, being very low on shields right now. Uh, very low on shields. Ah, shit! Wow. Oh. Are we about to hear a sad remix of the menu music? Oh, no. <laughs> Morton, Marcus, Fisk, and Lars. As much as I want to stick around and just listen to this jam again. <laughs> Let's we'll load a game. Ass. Why did I skip that? It was a bop. <laughs> and also a shmup was saving, you know? It's like we really didn't lose all that much progress. Thank you. 
Oh, weird. Why is my, uh... Oh, you know what? Wait. Oops, that's not what I meant to do, but... Uh, why is my missile button on my Joyda key not working? Well, whatever, I'll just hit it on the keyboard if I have to. Maybe because it's alt, because it's a modifier? Maybe it's pressing it and not releasing it. Ah. Uh, I'm not doing well. I am a big fan of how the humans have apparently uh, uh, created World War II fighter planes to attack us with. Damn, I guess those that don't uh, remember history because they live in an alternate universe are doomed to... Um, well, something. I'm sure it means something. Uh, I have 14 grand. Cannot afford upgrade. I guess, uh, shit, I think there's a shield refill not long after this. Uh, well, how much is a shield refill? Oh, 600? Oh, jeez, okay. Well, how much is it going to get me? Oh, okay, can't beat that with a stick. Um, okay, so in the other question... Yeah, why is my... That button is alt. Alt is the thing. I'm sure that I need to press and then release this. Uh... Please try assigning a special key code, which is labeled as for direct input. Sure. Oh, that, you know what? That probably would do it. Hmm. Oh, but that's only applicable to write alt. Oh, no, I mean, how, how could it really be, you know, how could it really be a furry game? You know what I mean? Like, how could it really be? Absolutely not electrokinesis, that's what God intended. There we go. Yeah! Party people, etc. Yeah, the fucking fireworks! I think I've summed up our feelings on them. Everyone's feelings on them. Yeah, I was right, there was a shield restore. Upgrade! Oh, cool, okay, it's not a specific upshot upgrade, that's just the next level of the cannon, so I wouldn't have gotten it, um, I think, if I hadn't bought the upgrade before. Or maybe I'm misremembering, maybe that wasn't on the last level. Okay, now I can buy the cannon upgrade. Maybe. Let's see. Thank you, Angie Mecca. Have a good one. Happy New Year. Bingo. Bingo. Maximum level is 14. All right. The only thing I care about is more guns. Oh, yeah, okay, we got the purple upshot now. And the upshot is that we can do more damage. One presumes. Most of the enemies only take one shot to kill anyway.
Yo? Yeah? Is it just me, or is this game doing some F mod shit? Just shifting between a whole, like, stable of, uh, of music smoothly. I don't think this is one song. Like, best of nonstop Super Eurobeat 1995 here in the Catboy game. What's that shit that the, like, Russian kids always used to do? The, 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 like, jump dancing to back in, like, 2009? Someone remind me. Oh! Was it literally jump style? Is that what it was? Oh, I have a bomb for this. It worked! Oh, is it boss time? Wait, did we just... Oh! Oh, we're in space now! Wait, there's a progression? I mean, of course there is. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Asked who? The sequel. This will never not go. God, imagine if you were... A, oh, take it easy, Zen. Happy New Year. Imagine if you were playing a Doom mod and when you got to the inner level screen, it was just this music. <laughs> You'd get so pumped. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Let's do some more Catboy Heroics. There he goes in his little ship. Okay, like, this is a shmup with, uh, you know, progression. There aren't that many for the PC platform that actually do that, other than Tyrion. <laughs> oh, hey, Amos. Happy New Year. Helicopters? This game has lost the thread. I do kind of feel like they just made, like, a very generic schmulver and then uh, tacked the Catboy plot on top of it. But that's okay. It's a shmup. They don't have stories. Bam! You can just slam your ship into the ground. It doesn't mind. Wait, are these the first things I've encountered that actually fire bullets? The idea of a helicopter in space is so funny. You know, it's funnier than a spaceship with an airfoil shape to it, you know? Which is already pretty funny.
Okay, good. There's a pause. I really need to open the window. It is warm. Uh, window open. Gwah! I do not like it when the men come from off the screen. Oh. Is it fancy flying time? Weh. I won! Boy, I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. That's what 2024 is going to be about. You know, I guess... Hmm. Uh, do I need to go over? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, the bastards. I do not have enough. I guess I could buy a... I'm going to buy a shield just in case. I hope I don't get squashed on the side of the screen. I'm thinking to myself, and I'm going, probably... Probably a helicopter in space that spun up its rotor. Right, yes, the helicopter itself would start counter-rotating, because they do that anyway if you don't have a tail rotor, even here on Earth. Meanwhile, back on Earth... Oh, you do get squashed! So, like, pretty much the principle of this shmup is, is you know, oh, what if you got your little fragile ship stuck into a bunch of really tight corridors, which is the same thing, the same, you know, the same basic concept as, uh, 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 uh is it Gradius? I think it's Gradius, yeah, it has all the little tunnels that you go through, except that these ones are entirely on the bottom, which, you know, kind of makes sense if you're skimming the surface of a planet. Wow! I didn't check the price of a new of a of a of a of, a, of an extra life. This one kind of sucks. That little uh, encounter there kind of sucks. What missile do I have up? Okay, I... Ah! I do not have any screen clears. Ah, shit! I think that's a game over. Okay. I think we've seen pretty much the whole game. Um, but... One thing I am going to look up... Is... Uh, I believe I heard that there is a floppy version of this that just has all, uh, let's see. No, that's the uh, Christmas version. I believe I heard there's a floppy version of this. And it's all, uh, all mods instead of, uh, Instead of, uh, well, you know, anyway. Let's see. There are two other, um, there, so I, I, the game came on, C this version of this game came on CD, um, and, uh, I found out that if you take a CD image, like a bin Q that has audio tracks and just drop it into FUBAR 2000, it'll just load it. Just donk. Um, and then you can just convert the tracks from there. So... Yeah, I, uh, there's only three audio tracks. The first one's the song you've heard. The second one, I think, is the intro. Let's confirm. On the island of Atlantis. Yeah. Overlinks had the courage. Yeah. And then the third one... I don't know what this is. It's playing. It says it's playing. It's 30 seconds long. Huh. 
No audio. Okay, well... Almost over. We might get jump scared here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. No, that's it. That's just an empty track. Bummer. Okay, well, anyway, uh, bear with me a moment. I want to see if I can find the floppy version of this game. There's the Interpose Tiny Demo. That might be it. I'm just going to run it. You can't see it. I'm just running it in the Internet Archive uh, in browser DOSBox. Let's see. Unmute. Oh, okay. Yeah, we heard this during the intro cinematic. But we're listening to it again. Oh, is that going to be it? Is it just the first chorus? Oh, maybe not. Yeah, we're going to get the solo. It slaps harder in some regards, but I'm still, I've listened to the vocal version at least 80 times. Gobs of stuff got ported from the Amiga. Are you kidding? A good third of the games that I've played on this, uh, my, my, you know, live streams uh, for DOS have been Amiga ports. Because here's the thing. 
right? It could handle it, you know. Um, a lot of stuff got ported to the Genesis and uh, to the SNES and stuff, but like, uh, I think there were probably all uh, th- th- like compromised in some way. But the PC, you just do the whole thing, you know. Um, all you really have to do is modify. <laughs> all you really have to do is rewrite your tracker completely to, <laughs> to mix the audio. Well, actually, I guess. I mean, it's already software mixing. Now that I think of it, it's just a matter of uh, no, it's not. That, that's right. It's shoving it into separate PCM channels. That's the only real difference. Is you, you know, your 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 module player is going to be virtually the same, except that it's going to have to it's going to do the uh, 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 four channel to to one or two channel mixing itself, which ain't that hard. And then everything else, you know, it's just yeah, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, oh, hello everyone. Hi. Did I play this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I? I didn't play this stuff on my last stream, did I? No, I think I. I think I. I think I just played this. Sorry, I'm I'm being I'm being suddenly uh, uh, taken by surprise here, because I don't remember any of these games. Well, I remember these games, but when did I play them? I don't think I did. Oh, sorry, Segfault. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, no. I think it is DOS only. I think it is. And um, I have we have pictures. I misplaced them, but there's pictures of the developers. Back when they were developing the game, and they've just got IBMs. There's no Amigas in sight. Just vibing. It was 1995, right? And not to suggest that the Amiga poofed into smoke when Commodore did, but, you know, all the same, it had been coming for some time. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, let's be clear, there was nothing about the Amiga, I don't think, that led to Amiga games feeling like Amiga games. Like, when we say that, what we really mean is it feels like a European home computer video game. And uh, in the same way that there's a feel to Japanese home computer video games that you could feel out very easily if you go look at, uh, the, like, Game Boy and Famicom games that got ported from them, you could you could feel it out if you've got experience with it. It's got nothing to do with the platform. It has to do with... Um, it has to do with vibes, you know? It just has to do with... Uh, with uh, what people were, you know, cribbing from each other. And it's just different in different places. Um, give me a second. Not that it necessarily matters whether I've played a game before, but um, I'm just curious. I don't think I played any of the stuff. I've got a bunch of, like, weird FPSs here I don't remember. So, let me just... Let's see. No, last time I did... No, last time I did... All Christmas games. And before that, we played uh, some weird platform games. We played some crappy FPSs. We played that Russian Metroidvania, one of them. I played a bunch of Titus games. Yeah. No, okay. I guess I didn't play any of these. <gasps> Wild. Um, oh, right, yeah, no, that's true. Last played was the 16th, which was, uh, three Saturdays ago, but I don't think I had a stream, so I think I was just chilling, just playing video, yeah, yeah, I streamed on the 12th and the 25th. All right, well, anyway, um, <laughs> oh, oh, right, okay, well, it's all, I just looked at the time, it's only nine o'clock, we have time to kill, so... Uh, we're going to play some shitty FPSs. <laughs> God. There are several bad ones here. <laughs> Take it easy, Hamas. Oh, pardon me. I should mute my mic when I do that. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't play good games here. This is Alien Trilogy. 
that's loud. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's gonna be good. <laughs> you just see that that first C, and you're like, oh, here it comes. Oh, ho, it's a probe game. Oh, this is gonna bang so hard. Burke, we've lost contact with the colony on LB426. Take Gorman and his team to investigate. We don't want anyone to learn that the company has deliberately infected colonists in order to smuggle alien specimens past ICC quarantine. Yes, sir. We don't want anyone to know all of that information. Alan. <laughs> Trust you. She's familiar with the xenomorph, and we may need her help to bring one out alive. Understood. All right, understand this. The bioweapons division had orders to eliminate anyone who attempts to interfere. Obviously, they won't be aware of your team's mission. Oh god, is that CG? It is. Good luck, Ripley. Wait, was that Bishop? Didn't he died? Well, that made sense. Yo! Damn, I wish my computer was three-dimensional. <laughs> oh man, the number of three-dimensional things we get to see in here. That's just a Microsoft IntelliMouse. The ideal joystick. Oh shit, the Gravis Grip! I've been accused. Okay, right, yeah, the grip pad was, I think, a licensed design for, like, the Saturn or some shit. Anyway. The Sporb? They got the Sporb! Uh, I have one of those, but no convenient way to connect it. You know, this music kind of goes. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> it supports HMD. Outstanding. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to give us some models for the language. You know what? Let's see the credits. Is it just going to be a simple roll? Oh, it's just a roll. Okay. Multiplayer? Wow. Wow. You're advised to can't read any of this text because of the poor contrast. Due to the protective design of the barrels for transportation, your 9mm will be ineffective in their removal. Oh, look at that putrid gun. Oh, that thing sucks. Now, to be fair, this does vibe, right? Let's be clear about that. The vibes are on point. Yo, this music. Oh, 
Oh, did this come out for the Saturn? That makes a lot of sense. Oh, that's right. If you stand in the acid, you get uh, acidated. Also, let's give this some more cycles. There we go. It runs a little fast, but that's okay. That voice actor was not, uh, well, yeah. That's right, gotta use the motion tracker. Nope. Also, the enemies are just, like, very much always moving. Uh, it's kind of a problem. Okay, can't break those. Oh, right. Shit. Nope. By the way, in this one, you just... These are just second-tier enemies. Just full-on xenomorphs. Yeah, no, I mean, doing it on the menu was fine, because if it, if it was slow, who cared, right? Like, there were no gameplay concerns. Come on. I hate that, like, you blow up the barrels, which can kill Xenos, and then they just come flying out of there. It's really irritating. Gotta get that derm patch. Oh. Like, ah, eh, yeah, I know. Did it die? Yes. So, say, like, Duke Duke of 3D and this game came to the same conclusion, which is, if an alien crawls on your face, you should just shoot under it, and we'll call that, we'll call that a hit. Because how else are we going to, you know, what, are we going to give you a dedicated melee button for this, or make it a little QTE? I mean, it should be a QTE, but nobody had thought of that yet. You know, I think the motion tracker is literal. I think if they're not moving, you can't see them. But yeah, I love how, like, any alien game, inevitably, you're going to run into the problem of the Xenos just becoming... Oh, this is definitely CD audio, yeah. There's too many cycles, yeah. Um, just the alternative kind of sucks. Like here, I think it started with uh, closer to this many. I've been a frame rate bitch since day one. I love that extremely fast reload sequence. It's great. This isn't the exit. I'm having a really difficult time. You have to understand, because every time that she says something, I'm like, that's not. And then my brain cannot remember who the actor is, which is really like, okay, it's Sigourney Weaver. Thank God. Because you have to understand that the only thing you can think of is Ellen Ripley, Ellen Ripley, Ellen Ripley. And that means that the only actor, the uh, actor, the only famous person I could think of to slot in there was Ellen DeGeneres, which is not where we want to be going. And wrong to boot. Uh, where's that battery? Must be in this room. Oh, there we go. But yeah, like, yeah, like, uh, the problem with an alien game is invariably you, the player, are just going to learn how to circle strafe the, uh, the Xenos because you're a fucking gamer and not a person who's actually in peril. And so it's really, really tough to make them an, a genuine threat. You know, the head crabs, shooting the head crabs is one thing. It's a little corny, but, you know, it's tolerable. But the Xenos are supposed to be terrifying, and they just aren't. You know, they're just, they're, they're doomed shotgun troopers. I don't think any of them have managed to hurt me. In fact, the head crabs have, uh, have actually been the only thing that managed to score a hit on me so far, I, I do believe. Okay, I'm sure that's the battery. Battery! Battery. Oh, 
Oh, and that's a level transition. Are we going to get to save now? I killed 78% of the aliens. Yeah, the shotgun's not very good. It was really easy to get shotguns wrong. There we go. Oh, ho, ho! fuck yes. I am effortlessly rotating my hard drive in my mind right now. I particularly love that the uh, pivot for the arm is in the wrong place. It's really good. All right, well, that's that game. Um, so there's that. Let's play what I actually consider a better alien game in ways. Wait, there's humans later? Holy shit. I didn't know there was an intro cinematic for this. We've uncovered something. Looks like an alien artifact. Secure the object for transport to base. That satellite sucks. <laughs> that establishing shot. Okay, so here's the thing. I actually, ha my position on Capstone has altered significantly. They were highly ambitious. And in my opinion, like this game is actually decent. I mean, it's no Jeff Gerstmann voice. It's no Doom 2. But uh, honestly, like it's kind of su surprisingly good in, in a number of ways. Um... Okay, good. Portions of the program, 1984, id software. I was wondering. Um, it's literally uh, a Wolfenstein 3D-based game, but it's one of the very, very few that... Oh, 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 God, that's terrifying. His head looks so distorted. This is one of the very few Wolf 3D-based games that actually, like, alters the engine enough to... to make it more interesting. There we go. I also, like, I really like this menu. And, like, yeah, I got the little eyeball there. It's like, that's charming. This is all charming. Right? Now, there is a comment to make on exit building, which I'll get to once we finish this. Also, <laughs> choose your rank. Whoa, there's so many. Well, there's actually only five difficulty levels, but then there's network, network teams, and modem, so... Anyway, we'll play uh, Captain, the middle difficulty. Oh, we're going to go back and try the CD music, but I wanted to do the FM first. All right. Uh, this is running probably about as fast as it should be. Oh, so one of my favorite things about this. So, okay, so you start out. Here you are. Um, and you can go forward. That's what you're expected to do. But if you turn around first and go this way, and we go this way... Really long corridor here, and at the end is nothing. Huh, hmm, well, let's go this way, and oh, what's this? What's this? The credits! The credits are all sprites in the game. How charming is that? I think that's really charming. So the weapons in this, um, I really like them. This one is the uh, assault rifle. It's obviously an alien. Assault rifle, right? But that's so strong. I love it. Oops, someone's shooting me. Oh, there's one of the uh, enemies. I love the enemy death animations. They're very good. Oh, whoops. That's an electric fence, which is a cool little bit of, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, so we've got, we got, you know, the transparent textures here, which were not present in Wolf 3D. They've added a gradient for the floor and ceiling that, like, obviously that's not very good, but writing a texture mapper is really expensive and difficult. But more importantly, like, this actually fits the style of the game because it all takes place in these dark, you know, dungeons. Also, there is distant, distance light fall off, which was not in Wolf 3D. So they've added quite a bit. But now check this out. 
So this is the weapon you start with, right? One thing I like is look at the ammo counter. It's not a number. It's a gauge. I, that was, I always thought that was cool as a kid. That's one of the neatest things I've ever seen. But now check this out. Let me show you what you're, when you run out of ammo, this is what you switch to. Your infinite ammo sidearm. Got a little pistol here. And I need everybody to get super hype, right? Because this to me, this is one of the sounds of my damn childhood, okay? The sounds and the looks. All right, are we ready? Is that not delight? Look how it kind of squishes. And that little, like, shitty silenced pistol. Yeah, it goes pew pew! Who couldn't love that face? The sound effects for the doors are really good. Um... There, oh, there's a bunch of pallet cycling. There's freaking pallet cycling. You see this? Yes. Oh. Oh, holy shit. Whoa. That's never happened before. Marathon luck. <laughs> okay, let's bail and restart this because I want to hear... I really like the FM soundtrack, but I want to hear the, the compact disc digital audio. Compact disc read-only memory digital audio. God, what do you think... Oh, you know what? There was no multiplayer in frickin' Wolfenstein. They added that. Oh, no. Is the CD audio not working? Hang on a second. Ooh, I don't think the CD audio works. Bad. Bad. We have to fix that. Yeah, the Red Book's not working. Oh, get ready. Yes! There's no key cards, you just have to go to computers and it opens doors. You get health from these little things, you open them, then you hit it again to take the health. This fucks. I had never heard this music before. Also, I really like that it, they modeled a human space. There's offices and stuff. That's how you get ammo. Yep. The people behind this had passion. Look how cool this is. Now imagine saying this game was bad. Also, check out the auto map. Holy shit. Okay, we're going to play again. Uh, we're going to play on easy, though, because I want to just bang through the levels. But, okay, what do we got, right? We've got, they've took the Wolfenstein 3D engine that nobody else managed to do anything worthwhile with, okay? <clears throat> they took the Wolf 3D engine. They added pallet cycling, transparency, uh, light fall off. Um, you know, they've got tons of new enemies in it, new weapons, uh, they have a key card system, except, you know, in, in, in a novel decision, instead of picking up key cards cribbed from Doom, um, you just have to unlock doors, you know, ship wide, right? Something we wouldn't really see in anything for quite some time. It's the same concept. It's no different, but it's, you know, a more diegetic um, 
use of, of that idea. Not to mention the fact that you have to investigate computer terminals to find out if they're the thing that unlocks the door. The weapons are novel. The music apparently bangs, which I did not know. Um, it has a feel to it. It's got a vibe. Um, and uh, also, it has an interesting concept. Um, that's I'm sorry, Rise of the Triad, that is true. Although I think Rise of the Triad is a worse game. It has tremendous amounts of style, but I don't think it's actually that good a game. Um, <clears throat> not that I haven't logged a thousand hours in it, I just don't think it's very good. <sighs> but at any rate, um, uh, uh, the other thing is that the concept of the game is novel. You have to kill all the enemies, and there's a fixed number of enemies on every level, and it tells you how many there are. That is so different from anything else that was around. I just, I gotta, like... I have to give it props. You know what? I guess my Joy to Key setup would probably work here. Let's see. Uh, it does not. Wait, why is my... Oh, right. I'm gonna give this... Oops. I'm gonna give this a few more cycles. There we go. That's a little better. Turn that mini-map on. I don't know the significance of the glowing dots on the mini-map. But yeah, the fact that, like, you're hunting a maximum of... Oh, on this difficulty level, it's only three aliens. So there's only three aliens here, but they can stomp you. So every time you encounter one, it's, you know, gripping. Oh, another thing is that... And I never understood this. This is not necessarily an indicator of quality. When you go through this area right here, it hurts you, and I have no idea why. It creeped me out as a kid. I couldn't figure out why it was happening. I still don't know. Oh, yes, and then there's the health chamber. Look at this guy. I love, like, the little imprint where you're going to pl plop your ass and, like, oh, it's so good. What a what a good use of pallet cycling. Oh. Elevator wow, so apparently... Oh, that one dropped a key? Wow, easy mode is really, really easy. Well, let's see. I don't know if I got hurt, but let's go into the uh, health chamber. Health chamber activated. It's sick. So we could leave right now, but uh, let's go take care of the other enemies. Wait, did I surprise that guy? break the glass. It appears you can't. You know, now the sound effects in this game make more sense. You're supposed to be hearing them with this music, and they're just so unsettling. Loud metal clangs. There we go. These fans. Hell yeah. Oh, I missed the uh, secrets. Uh, I don't think the flashing dots are enemies. Maybe they are, though. Oh, yeah, they are, because there's 17 enemies on this floor. But that must just tell me where they start. I don't think they're live. Well, I guess we'll find out if there's one in the last room. There was.
Oh, it's the same music. Is there is there only one track, I wonder? Or are there, like, episodes in the game? Maybe it changes after, like, three or four levels. Oh, yeah, it is live. That one's moving. By the way, I love that, like, it's just, it's terrifying to hear uh, a door open somewhere, you know? You just hear that clang and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, damn it. Ah. <laughs> I could have exploited that to get through the uh, blue door. Uh, let's see. Got his ass. This is probably where the uh, blue clearance comes from. There we go. Also, I, one of the things that just really sends me is the fact that to get to health, you have to open it, then take it. Two separate steps. And you can just leave it open. Um, and it, you know, stays that way. You know, just little bits of physicality to the world that you don't expect. There was, you know what? Hang on a second. Wait a minute. Did I do this whole area? Okay, I did. All right. Sorry. I remember there being a blue door I couldn't open. Where was it? Was it up this way? Yes. Because I know that there are more weapons in the game, and I would like to have all the weapons. Weapon, 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 pawn. Okay, well, I didn't actually realize the game had, like, a motion tracker. That honestly makes it quite a bit easier. Uh, oh gosh, there are isolated rooms on the map. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that's gotta be what it is. Hmm. I wonder if those are actually rooms or if there's some sort of, uh, just like, detritus left in by the, uh, by the mappers. Amerka. Red access. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that's the uh, elevator. Oh, the track finally changed. Yeah, I don't know. If those are secret rooms, I don't know how to get into them. Oh, and like changing themes in different areas, you know? Again, they've managed... I, I am always down on this as a concept, um, but... They've managed to craft human spaces into their 90s first-person shooter. It's so hard to do. It's so hard to make it work. You know, you just... You have no choice but to stand. Oh, okay. Well, this one is the elevator, and the other four appear to just be at the four extents of the map. So, I have to believe there are secret areas, the quote-unquote restricted areas, but I don't have the faintest idea to get to them. Still scary. Still scared me. I will say that without the damn map, uh, I'd be pretty lost. Uh. Oh, they reused this for Tech War? Man, okay. So... I don't know how well-known Tech War actually is. I know that a lot of people who know about bad games know about it. It is a terrible game. It is absolute shit. However, that is a tragedy. It deserved better. And personally, I really wish... Like, if I, if I was a millionaire, I would fund a remake of Tech War. Or I would... No. I would fund people to finish it because I think the game 
was good. Um, if I think the I think the game had a lot of great, um, a lot of great ideas, and they did a lot of great work, and then it got, you know, the company fell apart, and um, they didn't get to finish it. Now I'm not saying that it would have been one of the best games of all time, but I think that if it had been given a chance. I think it would be regarded as mids, but ahead of its time. And that's that's my firm opinion. I really think I really think that Tech War deserved better. Poor Tech War. I mean that's you know, the other thing is, like, it wasn't exactly starting from a place of great um, literary... Uh, you know, the material was not terrific. <laughs> this music is starting to get a little bit... A little bit... I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Oh, look at that. See, they're using pallet cycling to simulate the tape. I love it. Okay, now, did it just run out of music, or are we going to get a new track? Because it sounds like it just went... Well, okay. Uh, out of music. Or... Did my sound card crash? No, because I'm still getting sounds. Okay, okay, no. So the deal with Tech War... And, like, I don't know. Probably everyone here has seen Tech War. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should play Tech War. But basically, the, the problem with Tech War... I mean, like, yeah, obviously, it, it just wasn't finished, right? But specifically what that means is... They had made a huge hub-based persistent world with a bunch of... Oh, I just got injured again. Oh, ow. What, what's hurting me? I don't know. Never heard of Tech War. Okay. All right. Well, then when I'm done here, I'll play Tech War because it's also a Capstone game. And uh, I love Capstone. Um, I had the share versions of all their games when I was child. And they captivated me <laughs> um, because they were so weird. I could tell that there was something about them. And I'd say that they were the most interesting... Um, one of the most interesting companies working in the in the PC gaming space that wasn't making, you know, AAA bangers that went on to become floor plan. Wait a minute, but I had the floor plan. Oh, you know what? I just realized if you're playing on a... a you'll see what's hurting you? Wait. Huh? Are there invisible enemies? Whoa, what the fuck? Huh? Huh? Okay, well... Okay, I think I've made my point. This company was so immensely um, ambitious. They wanted so badly to make something that had never been made before. Um, they were not phoning it in. And I think that there are a number of companies that are making games for like the frickin', uh, yeah, let's lose the cat for now. <laughs> I think there were a number of companies making, you know, Doom clones. Uh, first person shooters for the, the you know, PSX and, and, and Saturn and whatnot that were really phoning it in, that really were not trying very hard. And this is just one of those things where I, you know, I have to say, I look at it and I just think, you know, there's as much, there's as much potential in Capstone's little finger um, as, uh, as there was in the entirety of, of a number of devs that put out just total crap in the 90s um, for, for other platforms and, and, you know, are still around. 
<laughs> it's interesting because, like, is it ahead of its time? Well, I don't know that anybody ever made whatever the hell it is that they made here exactly. You know, I, I don't know that this exact this 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 became a, a specific genre or or that any of these concepts. You know, blah blah blah. It's just that. Um, well, my favorite thing about my favorite thing about going through like old ZX Spectrum games, for instance, stuff like that, is finding game concepts that nobody ever thought of again. You know, one person thought of it. I'm trying to figure out how to open those damn red doors. I think Capstone was trying to be ahead of their time. I really do. Um, I think that. Oh, oh, that's right. Whoops. There. Uh, okay, I was sitting here going, well, there's no, there's no run button. But there is, it's just on right shift instead of left. And the thing is, when you press it, so this is walk, this is run, but you can see that my gun isn't bobbing, so I'm not, like, they like bodged this in. So when you walk and then hit it, it adds it up. Hey, Kevin. Video James. I'm going to take a second. Uh, corridor 7, walkthrough. Is there a walkthrough? I don't think there will be. Uh, hints and tips. Always, before you begin each level, turn on your proximity map. Uh, yeah, this is all about... This is all about how to, uh, how to kill the enemies. Um, try to gain access to every secret room. These places are the key to your survival of this game. Oh, fun. Uh, if you switch to the uh, red visor, it'll show you what's on the computers before you interact with them, so you don't have to waste the time to go interact with them. Yeah, I don't know what went wrong with the chat. It's been messed up for months. Uh, YouTube changed something, and I don't know how to fix it. And um, I don't think I care. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it's because I'm deleting the silly, stupid React bar at the bottom. And, like, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, nothing there. Corridor, are there any cheats? Wait, there was an official strategy guide? There was an official paper strategy guide. Holy crap. Oh, also, there are, there are cheats. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and save my game. Store mission. Okay, there we go. You press W, A, and X, and it gives you all the weapons. So we can at least see what the weapons were going to be. Oh, and it unlocks these doors. Wait. W what? Why is the only thing in there... What? <laughs> okay. All right. Holy shit. Uh, okay, so what's interesting is this weapon that you start with is actually weapon number three. Weapon number two looks like a shotgun. Yep. What ammo is this drawing from? Oh, I think I have infinite ammo now. It's got that deluxe paint stank to it, um, but seems all right. Yo. God, the soundtrack, though. Oh, yes. Yes. I love a gun designed by a 13-year-old. That's so good. Yeah, let's put the cat cat jam back. Next weapon. Yes, this was in the demo. Okay, there we go. And now that's draining my ammo. Okay. I do have a lot of ammo. That's so good. Ooh. That's the minigun, I believe. Whoa. Oh, 
I ran out of ammo. There we go. This must be the game's equivalent of like a BFG. Well, let's move on to the next level and see what it does. Because I'm just about done with this. It's time to go fast. Speedrun strats. Oh, no, this is CD audio. God, the music is so good. All right, let's find some aliens. So another thing is that uh, on the higher difficulty levels, your map doesn't show you everything, and it doesn't show you where all the enemies are. So that's another thing that they added. Over uh, like Wolf 3D, etc. So yeah, this is uh, this is shit hot. Honestly, like I'm just. This is one of the best, like, Wolf Era... No, this is the best Wolf Era FPS, hands down. Uh, unless you want to count Rise of the Triad. But that's been so heavily modified from Wolf, I just don't know that it counts. It's, it's barely even, you know, related. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, in conclusion, I love this game. This game is good. Did I have anything else out of that collection that I didn't want to forget? Um, Mars 3D and Last Rites were both... Uh, well, they're interesting, but they're not that interesting. Um, that was a mess. Don't remember Fate. Don't remember Desperabus. Yeah, hmm. Don't know. I think we'd be better off looking at uh, capstone games. So let's uh, let's get on that. Uh, uh, what am I looking for? Tech War. Tech War. William Shatner's Tech War. No, actually, the game has pretty good FM music, which is the only thing that I had because I had the shareware. Um, and uh, this game is not going. Oh my god. This game is not going to have great... Well, actually, no. Supposedly, it's the same soundtrack. They just reused it. Um, but I thus do not wish to listen to it. Also, I'm liking the fact that, yeah, apparently you have to manually start the CD audio. That bangs. Um, but let's go ahead and play this with... Um, see if we can get the sound canvas to work. I suppose you're wondering why you're here. It's simple. You're the best. At least I think you are. You've already figured out that if this weren't important, you'd still be in cryosleep, so I'm not going to waste your time, or more importantly, mine. Last month, Miyoshi Nakahara and her family disappeared while sailing a 40-foot wind cruiser around the world and are believed lost. A week later, Nikolai Petrovsky suddenly left his lab and has not been seen or heard from since. It's occurred to me that the disappearances were no accident. Oh, in case you miss the relevance, Nakahara is a Nobel Prize winning cyberneticist whose forte... The weird thing about this is that William Shatner wrote the books. Well, he didn't write them. They were ghostwritten, but still. The connection He's not that bad an actor. The worst thing to hit this city since the quake of 22. But this is pretty crappy. If the tech lords have developed a way to broadcast tech... Yeah, so anyway, they're broadcasting tech using the Matrix. So, briefly... This is a, I believe what this was supposed to be was a, uh, yeah, I believe this was supposed to be like a, a, fair, a, a linear game in the sense that, um, you know, you would, uh, or no, I'm sorry. I, I think this was supposed to be sort of a non-linear game, like an open world kind of game that they couldn't gel. They couldn't make it gel before, you know in time for release. So, it gives you these uh these seven stages and I think they were all I think they were just supposed to be one initially because you start from a hub world, right? Um I think they they bodged this in. Because I mean, look at the check out the art in the background. It's obviously not finished. You've got this like you have the the big eagle wings they copied off of one sprite and then the background the shield behind that which is copied off a different sprite and the stuff in the front is just a placeholder, right? This isn't done. 
Um, this is literally not a finished uh, piece of art. Um, and when you load one of these levels, it does give you a uh, it does give you a, a like this intro thing. Quick, I'm uptown, and I just saw Marty Dollar. Get down here and help me bring him in. You start near Midtown and work your way through the area. Quick, I'm uptown. So, there's a train, and the train actually works. And, um, sorry, one moment. This is the menu. Ah, shit. Damn it. I was just trying to, officer, I was just trying to give it more cycles. There we go. A few more cycles. There we go. So this is on the build engine. And I'm going to restart. Okay. So, okay, first off, it's a game where you can holster your weapon. That's interesting. You can also travel from place to place by getting on the train. So you start here, main station, and then, yeah, stop one, two, three, four, five, six. Um... Obviously, like, they've gone to great lengths to make this, like, a human-looking space. You know, so there's that. Also, uh... I was gonna say, I think that the... Um... No, I'd say the scale is not that bad. I mean... The bench looks right. The trash can looks right. Um... Oh, the scale on the enemies is all wrong. I'll give you that. But what else is new? Oh, I also like that... See, for instance, they've got, like, the, the grating up there, right? Because we're underground. And they actually bothered to put sprites down here to make it look like there's there's light shining through, right? So, some interesting ideas. Um, <laughs> why doesn't the door open sideways? It looks like it's supposed to open sideways. Yep, there we go. That's me, Gabriel Knight. But then, yeah, like, uh, the door is... You're right, the scale is off for a lot of stuff. The door is way too big, for instance. But, you know, there's a lot of attention to detail going on here. So we, we go up, um, and... Uh, oh, you know what? We're at the wrong station. We have to... Uh, we actually have to take the train to, to begin. So I should... Let's just go ahead and restart. There we go. So we'll just jump on the train... You know, train's pretty convincing for a for a freaking build engine game. Um, doors to my left. Okay, we get off here. Genetic security checkpoint. I think this is relevant to the plot of Tech War. Yeah, that's right. This is like a really early uh, build game before before Duke came out. Yeah, you can you can just jump in front of the train and die. So that was a hub area, so when you walk through the, the, the gate, you know, you load into a, a new zone. So that's cool. And it is persistent, I believe. Okay, so now... So now we get out here, right? And like, whoa, look at this. We've got this, this huge area. Okay, let me remember... Sorry, I need to remember... Uh, that is the gamma control. There we go. Uh, I R U E I R U I I eh. E. There we go. Okay. The HUD are these individual little things that you got to pull out. And like for instance, uh, you got a rear view mirror, right? That's cool. Um, R R I E you. Okay, nothing there. What am I missing? Uh, there's a score, a lapse time, a reticle. Score, time. Uh, sorry that's so loud. G? No, that doesn't seem to work. I know there's one more menu, or at least there, there's supposed to be. Anyway, so for instance, you know, you're supposed to keep your gun holstered, because there's cops and there's civilians, right? So all these people I've encountered are not enemies. You know, so that's theoretically the thing. Okay, but now... Here's what happens. I can get hit by these cars, by the way. There we go. Okay, so I'm now being shot. And basically... If 
I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, what was supposed to happen, let me turn this down. If I remember correctly, what was um, what was supposed to happen is they were supposed to have like this complicated AI system that had all these uh, uh, variables about you know what you've done and, and who's seen you before and whatnot. None of that happened. They didn't have time to code it. So as far as I can tell, they basically just um, coded all the enemies to instantaneously hit scan attack you, no matter how far away they are, and um, consequently, it's basically the whole time you're outside you are constantly being shot and you can't see from where, right? So that sucks. Then there's the fact that like the whole place is just sort of, it's really hard to tell what the fuck is going on. There's, you know, guys gunning for you everywhere. The, ah, shit. By the way, uh, infinite ammo, um, infinite ammo uh, uh, sidearm, very important to me as a concept. Uh, really, I don't think any game should be without it. There's also some wild weapons in this. So what you're supposed to do here is to like go into different go into different buildings again like the scale is all off. Yeah, see I'm instantly instantly taking damage. So you're supposed to like go into different buildings. Got to kill this cop now. There's health somewhere I don't know where. Um Oh, I guess it's in the lower left. That's my health. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, hit scan hell. See, I have no idea who's shooting me. No idea at all. Oh, there's, okay, partly invisible dudes? Is this the bad guy? This might be the guy I'm supposed to be after. Oh, or, it, you know what? It might be a hologram might be what's going on. I think I remember hearing that that's a thing. Great cop voice. Really good cop voice. Like, you can see, you can just look at it, and you can see with your eyes that they had some great ideas. You know, they just had some really big ideas. But I think what I'm supposed to be doing here... Oh, there we go. There we go. We got the gun. There we go. Uh, who is... Oh, there we go. Was a hologram. It's the message when you kill them. Oh, there's... Okay, that, oh, oh, all right, that was like a fembot. Just ran into me and exploded. Um. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, let's see, I think there are cheat codes for this. Okay. There we go. Drop the weapon uh, all weapons is shift, alt, w. There we go. So there's some interesting, there's some other interesting ideas here, like the notion, when you first get this gun, if you fire it, just fire it like that, the bullet will like, woo, just, you know, it, like it's unrifled, you know? So you pick this up, and it's like really powerful, because, uh, here, let me just... Come on. Uh, well, anyway, it'll gib some guys, and, it, and I thought that it had a blast radius, maybe that's only in the demo, I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's really strong, and... Uh, it's just extremely inaccurate at first, so you can only use it at close, you know, close range. And then later you pick up the targeting reticle for it, which I think is that icon on the right, um, below the two key cards. Um, so there's that, you know, that's neat. Uh, there's a bunch of other weapons. This one, obviously, is kind of, uh, that's just sort of a laser gun, but I think... Yeah, there we go, that, that gives... Yeah, so that, that hits like a truck. Uh, we've got sort of like a... You know, yeah, it's a great video game. Got flamethrower here. Yeah. Uh, what do we got? This is gonna. Is she attacking me? Who's attacking me? Was an android. Okay, I guess she was attacking me. Really weird. Like the top rocket goes a lot faster than the other ones only in matrix right uh, there's a matrix and i watched a speed run of this and the matrix is absolutely horrible but anyway so uh, 
Okay, so we've got the key card now. So what we do is we open this. Okay, this this I think is who we're here to kill. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. No, I think we just come in here to get a freaking key card from them. Let's see. I think there's like a delay after you kill the boss. It, you just sort of hang around for a long time. He's got a gun. Out of that, there's one more building we can go into. Yeah, okay, here we go. I think this is the one. Yeah, I think you're supposed to kill the person in that one building, and they give you a key card for getting into the other building, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, like, diegetically, why would the key cards be in these different buildings? I feel like probably they did have some trouble trying to explain why you'd be exploring this world the way you were. Oh, okay, that's, um... Weapon. I guess that's all that's here? Okay. I like the alarm going off if I've got the key card. Uh, you hear the exhaustion in my voice? The disappointment? This could have been good. You know, you can tell. You can tell that there's, like, really... There's some meat on these bones. You know? There's something here. And, um, I kind of think probably if they'd been given another year to work on it, they would have churned out something that was not one of the best games of all time, to put it mildly. But, uh, yeah, this had the potential to be one of the games of all time. Uh, let's go get back on the choo-choo. Can we just go to the next area? Because I want to go to the area that was in the in the demo. There's some wild stuff there. I like that I can just see the train at the first station. Oh my god, I thought they did a warp. But no, it was just there. Oh, and then, uh... There we go. There we go. That's the whole subway map. How do you like that? Ain't that good? Oh, it skips. It skips that uh, that station. So I don't know if I'll be able to get to the demo map here. Well, I mean, you know, digitized sprites were, again, such a thing. Um, they were all over the place. But certainly one of the problems this game runs into is it struggles with... Um, Oh, I think we, when we step in here, we warp into an elevator. No? Huh. I can't tell what happened there. I think one of the problems this game struggles with is one that, that Duke Nukem 3D do Jor, uh, struggled with as well. When you make human-sized spaces for FPS characters, the problem is that FPS characters are... They're tanks. They're basically rolling artillery. And any environment you put them in is like driving a car around indoors. So inevitably, um, you're going to have this issue of, of little tiny rooms with what is essentially a vehicle driving around inside of them. Just absolutely going too fast and too awkward to make it over, you know little tiny obstacles and whatnot, so you're just always bonking on everything, you know, and... So, they try valiantly in a number of games. Um, some of the Duke 3D levels, all of Shadow Warrior, and this game... I'm, like, soft-locked here. I don't think I'm supposed to be back here. Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to be back here. They... they... Tr yeah. They tried valiantly to... to turn that into something. Um... And likewise, uh, Witch Haven. I keep thinking about just doing a video about capstone games. Because, <sighs> man... Okay, so Witch Haven, right? Um, Etten Grinders. Which, what? What is that? Never heard of that. Happy New Year. In Central Time. Uh, okay, so there's a website called ettengrinder.youfailit.net. 
Whoa, okay. Oh, right, right. The source code for Witch Haven and Witch Haven 2. They made a sequel to this. So I'll show you this game in a minute, but it's, woof, it's pretty rough. Um, but uh, that's right. They actually released a... Uh, they made a source release, and this is like the improved bug-fixed version. Yeah, I'll, I'll fire that up. <laughs> So this is Witch Haven. This is another, I think, early build game. And what's really... One of the interesting things about it is you start right out, you're like, oh, I gotta go fight these guys. They actually fight each other. I guess there's other factions? I don't know. And then we can actually just climb over all of this. Oop. And, yeah, just skip it. There's also, like, cracks with lava in them. And as a kid, I couldn't see them. Um... So I was just approaching the door, getting hurt, not knowing why. So, you know, there's there's that. And then, um... So obviously we have a first-person melee combat game, which is always, like, a, a, a tough row to hoe. You know, it's difficult uh, for that to be good. Some malformed textures, a little bit kind of unfortunate there. Definite budget game energy going on there. These guys are like claymation, which is cool. That guy had an ass. I don't know if you noticed that. Okay, so then you notice these guys both drop short swords. And you'll just keep on picking up short swords as you play the game. Everything drops a weapon. And then as soon as you get that, like, wait a minute. Hang on. Here's a whole ass morning star. Right? We'll pick up the Chex Quest armor. Oh, and look at this. Look at this little touch. Look at this. They bothered to give the water somewhere to go. That's so cute. But, um... So you pick up these weapons, and you're like, huh, weird the game just gave me two weapons all at once. Well, let's go ahead and... Oh, these guys are actually really tough. Oh, maybe I misremembered. Oh, I'm playing on kind of easy, so maybe that's what's up. Okay. I think we have to... Oh, that's the other thing, right? Why do we have fists if we started out with a dagger? What's that about? We have four weapons right now. Okay. Right, so there's a potion system that works a lot. You know, it's like Diablo. You've got your potion belt, right? So I'm going to drink a potion. Uh, so you got a bunch of different potion types and quantities therein. It's just an inventory system, but whatever. You know, I still like the fact that it's so specific. Because you, you have a spell system. You can see there in the middle, I've got spells. And those are separate from the, uh, from the potions, right? So you've got two different inventory systems. That's neat. Okay, this room here, if I recall, something... There we go, get that, get the adamantine ring. Can't remember what that does. Trying to remember if there's another... God, is there yet another inventory system? I can't recall. Let me go ahead and save. Because I know I tend to get my ass kicked after this point. So this is cool. We've got this construct here, out, out here in this little, like, uh exterior exterior uh, uh, space so we open that oops nope I screwed it up ah no 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 uh, that's actually an elevator uh, we have to wait for this to come up now no it absolutely looks like it should have uh, 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 texture correction errors uh, come on okay that's kind of why I saved must be on the ground. Oh, right. Technically, we're floating. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure that voice is supposed to sound like that. Okay. So, we get in this thing, and we ride it down. And, like, this this whole elevator is built out of, I think, weird sector tricks. So, yeah, this looks dope as shit, right? You know, we got the floating bridge here. They couldn't quite make intersect due to the, um, the build engine's severe troubles with room over room. Um, oh, and then we've got... Oh, shit! Ah, uh, I thought you were just supposed to tank it. Resist fire potion. That's right, you are supposed to just tank it with the help of a potion. Use caution. Drink a potion. As they say. They do say that. And then, oh, you can 
get in here. We pick up a shield. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, the shield's a separate, uh, separate uh, uh, UI element, right? So again, this is the same company, right? I don't know if it's the same exact developers. Same company though. Very, very ambitious. Oh, it opens into here. I didn't know that. Um. Well, shit. Is the elevator back? No. <laughs> uh, can we just fall? Oh, we can just fall. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I was going to go in the lava for a second. Oh, whoa, big guy. Big man. Yeah, those sound effects are not playing back the way they should be. I'm pretty sure. Ah, uh, I'm looking down. Oh, how did that happen? Hang on. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, that's right. F1 is not help. F1 is, uh, the F keys are change, um, freaking. I'm pressing buttons. I am pressing buttons. Is it the mouse? Oh, okay. Mouse look, mouse, mouse look works. Okay. All right. I won. So, like, as far as, as far as, you know, I saw somebody say, like, oh, this is, you know, bud, you know, dollar store Hexen. No, I think this is better than Hexen. I never liked Hexen. I wanted to, but it was trying to do too much with, with, within the limitations of the Doom engine. Um, also, I think I wanted to demonstrate something, but it's, I don't... I don't know if it's gonna... There we go! There's weapon degradation! That's why everything drops a weapon. Because if you keep using that short sword, it's gonna break. And if you keep using your dagger, it's gonna break. And then you get reduced to just using frickin' fists. Uh, we need to use... That wasn't what I wanted. I need to use a spell, which we do with what? How do we use a spell? It's not that. Is it backspace? No. Is it shift? No. Uh... Ah, shit. Drank another potion. Oh, God. Oh, God. Did you eat all this acid? Oh, how do I cast the spell? How do I cast it? <sighs> help. Oh, there we go. There is a help. Oh my god, that's not very helpful. Wait, is that... Oh, okay, there we go. Wait, it's Tildy. Oh, right! You press Tildy. That's your fists, but it's also cast spell. <laughs> so yeah, my, my morning star is damaged. I'm gonna let those guys fight it out. Oh, I was here before. I just took another route. A lot of stuff going on in here. Oh, and there's like the, yeah, the fireballs coming from behind the frickin' eyes that are really hard to avoid. I hate this damn room, actually, now that I think of it. Got the scroll, we got the pentagram, and we're get and, and we're getting the fuck out of here. The ambition here is just off the scale, right? We've got, we got spells, we got a potion belt, we've got a uh, weapon degradation. Morningstar is useless. Um, we got enemies infighting for little set pieces, right? Fucking sprites made from claymation. Um, wait, do you not? Is that not usable? I could have sworn that was usable. You know, it's just... Whoa, no! But you can also see that it's not very well made. Like... They really wanted to make something big here, and unfortunately, it, it was a little bit beyond their grasp. And, uh, okay, that was the end of the first level. So, wow, and there's no prompt when you hit new game, so I just threw away my, my progress. So, yeah, that's... That's that. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, okay, so then Witchhaven 2 just the turns the knob until the stem snaps off this the first game like you you play it and you're like wow this, this 
I, I've never gotten that far in it, to be frank. Um, maybe it gets really bad later, but it starts out seeming like... Oh, no. Why are we stuttering? Well, anyway. It starts out just seeming... Um, it seems solid enough, you know, and you wonder, like, huh, could this be good? Well... I don't know for sure. Maybe, uh, maybe it stays about that good. Um, maybe it, uh, maybe it gets worse. Maybe it gets better. I, I don't know. It's not the best game by far, but there's a lot of ideas going on there. Witch Haven 2 is a fucking mess, and I don't know what they were thinking. It's, it's like fucking Kaizo Witch Haven. So, like, it's too dark to see anything. Oh, you also start out dual wielding. So that's fun. Just start right out with two weapons. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, where is it? Right? So, like, dudes rock, okay? But I'm also nearly dead already. And this is the beginning of the damn game, and I'm nearly dead already. And, like, just look at this huge place I'm in. You can immediately tell that there's just so much to do and figure out right off the bat. Guys spawning in, I think. Like... You know, I'm not actually sure what the what the first game to use uh, 3D models was because there are a number that that did it before. Uh, oh, that is the exact same scanned photo of a uh, a statue or a fountain or something that Doom used for the, uh, the 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 face button. So there's that. All right, 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 right. Yeah, we're wandering in the dark, and there's just crazy shit going on. Oh, we got some gold. Uh, somewhere around here, there's a exit to a courtyard. Oh, what is this? Duke, Duke Nukem 3D ass. Oh, that's right. I think we have a bow. I think we might have a bow. Let's see. We do have, like, all the weapons that you get by the end of the first game. So, actually, I've got, like, a, a long sword, I think. And, uh... Yeah, man, I don't know. And, like, the music sucks. Like, what the fuck is this, you know? Here we go. Here we go. And then outside... Let me see if I can turn up the, uh... Um, is there a brightness control? No. No. Okay, now I'm dead. Yeah, but now we're rich. I don't know. Pardon me for that. <sighs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. This this is uh this is video games. This to me, this is video games. I don't, I don't know. Like Witch Haven sucks and Witch Haven 2 sucks in a conceptual way and that's worse. Witch Haven 1 was at least like it had some ideas. Oh right. Eternum. Except that wasn't... Suppose that was not developed. <sighs> Man, Eternum is weird. I'm not going to play this for very long. Welcome to Eternam. If you consulted our brochure, you'll know this is the vacation of a lifetime. Wow, it's Eternam. Darn Jones are about to visit islands, which are highly accurate historical reproductions. Many synthetic humanoids will provide stunning realism, adding to your intense pleasure. If you experience any inconvenience, I'll be in touch. Have a nice stay. So this shit gets virtual hide light real fast. So this was developed by Infogrames. And 
Yeah, so it's like a Westworld theme, and then um, somebody can name the, uh, I think, SNES game, where this is the, the 3D overworld, you know? And then uh, we've got, let's see, oops! Don't know what the alert means. I'm so, there we go. You know, like, theoretically, we'd be able to talk to somebody, but, like, I think I'm taking damage? Yeah, so I don't know. There's an alert going on. There, I, I killed that guy. And it's got, like, a Dragon's Lair grade animation. And then uh, we get here. Okay, and now it's like a... It's like a point and click? And you're this guy? Nice fire. I just had it stuffed. I don't give a shit. It's close enough. Nice fire. It's like we just we just changed genres and energies completely, right? Let's see, talk to this guy. Would you mind telling me where I am? D yeah, yeah. Is this bugged out? This is the island of Cauda. It's the tail end of the archipelago. Do careful where the rain's here. You'll find this castle nearby, to the east. Can you tell me a bit more? Lamp oil. Rope. Bombs. We've got it all. If you've got the rupees. <laughs> It literally, like, is this a CDI game? There is nothing more to tell. Just head east and you'll see what you see. And like, I can tell you as a kid, I wandered around in this game for hours until I found the exact castle he's talking about. So like, I, I have no idea what happens in this game after you, uh, after you, uh, 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 do the like there's a whole game that happens inside the castle he's talking about and i never saw this again i played this game for hours as a kid i never got out of the castle again i think there's a whole game in there i don't know if any of this is relevant i'd also like to point out that there's no fucking compass so you can't tell where east is there's also a day night cycle right and then i think Oh, okay, that's us, not the uh, not the girl. I thought there was a way to contact the girl. Anyway, actually, what's what's our options as far as disc? Okay. The music is amazing. So I guess everything we meet is an enemy. So there's that. I don't know, does that health even matter once we're inside? I think it's just loaded. Okay, I think this might be the castle. Nope. No, I think the cat. There we go. This is the castle. And I think this game's supposed to be a comedy? I really think we just started the game proper. You know? Whoa. The weird, like, where it. it see, it'll. And, and 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 you might think like oh you're giving it too much cycles but like I played this on a Pentium back in the day so everything seems to happen too fast and like he'll see something and comment on it right right like just the violent clashing styles we've got like a Hanna Barbara kind of thing going on now that'll teach you to attack innocent violets. Oh, right. Cut! We wish to make it clear that no dog has been mistreated during filming. The dog is, in fact, a well-paid professional stunt hound. Extremely well-paid. Uh, how much is well-paid? Uh, 30 GP? And what? In that case, we'll do it again. And let's have more sincerity this time. This made me so uncomfortable as a child. Please forgive this regrettable incident, Master. Thanks for helping. 
You're here about the ad? I think it happens again. I think it keeps happening. Master, to be frank, it's a subject of more interest to his lordship than to me. Present yourself before the duke, master. Lord Ethelred is to be found at the end of the second hallway in the council chamber. Greetings. A most spiteful dog, don't you think? Uh, hello. So, you met the dog- The zooming in on the pixels? Like, it's like a retro game! Yes, he attacked me most viciously. The rest of the ordeals finished me off. Ordeals? What ordeals? I didn't get past the first test. What test was that? A gaze to be avoided. Yep, that's that's it. Okay, well, let's save. In it the game. All I remember from this is stealing some sweet meats. Sweet reds. A sweet meat. Candy, probably. Take a sweet meat. There's nothing to take. Like the whole business where he just won't like his little tooltip only appears for a second. Love greenery. Can I... Can, does that mean I can take something? It's just so oblique! Is that a guy up there? No, I, I don't know. Is that a trap door? Sure looks like one. Excellent handkerchief. Can't be taken. Or did he say handcraft? See, I can't see the... Uh... Right? Right? Well, who goes there? Pray, leave this room immediately. I have quite enough problems as it is. My keys have been missing for three days. The voice acting is... Do not oblige me to resort to violence. The fucking, like, you know text that looks good on the page but just you can't read it out loud you know pray don't oblige me to resort to violence dear sir <laughs> winter's on its way like is it is winter on its way we didn't see there was no good morrow I, master Good morrow. Can I talk to this guy? Hi there. I'm looking for the Duke. Where can I find him? For some, there's supposed to be text up there, right? Once you're at the entrance, <laughs> just go straight ahead. Why are all the folk like why are all the vocal lines blown out? Right? Okay, yeah, there's supposed to be there's supposed to be text on the screen. The text rendering is completely broken. Like, how can that happen? No information on it online. Oh, but wait, does that include, like, the options for what to say? Because surely the A, B, C, D are, are optional dialogue choices, right? Hi there. I'm looking for the Duke. Where can I a tidy place? That is a lowly search. Oh, you just hover over it and you get to hear it. Oh, no. Hi there. I'm looking for the Duke. Where can I a tidy place you've got here? Who handles the cleaning? Where does the Duke keep his safe? <laughs> that Duke sure is a wonderful person, right? What's for supper? Onion soup, master. 
I wonder what's for dinner. A hand basin. This was another capstone game. They didn't make it, but they did publish it, apparently, which is weird. Because Infogrames was publishing here at that time. Like, why? I don't... It's almost like Capstone was just like, hey, this is our kind of jank. Look at the uh, the, the painting up there that follows me. You know, like, it, the tonal shift. Where do you think you're going? I'm looking for the Duke. Go down to the end of the corridor. I'd bring a sweet meat for the secretary if I were you. He's a greedy guts and he'll want something tasty before he lets you pass. I almost forgot. It'll soon be time for the train. Huh? Warning, keep fingers away from the... Ah! Oh, did I just die? Yeah, there's an outlet there. If you walk up to it, he just sticks his fingers in it. Right? Like, what the fuck is this? Good grief. What was that train doing here? A train in a castle? Of course. It's the Medieval Express. When you have a message or a packet to send in a hurry, it's the fastest way. That was probably the Duke's pajamas on their way to the laundry. Why are all the voice lines completely blown out, though? You still here? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Next time, stand back. There's still some time before the buffalo come through. Get a move on. Here we go. Here it comes. Oh, my. That ghastly train has ruffled my hair again. You don't think I should have it dyed, do you? I suppose you heard about you that. You don't think island. I should have it dyed, do you? Of course, we all know how she does it. Did you see last night's episode? No? Well, Mike finally divorced Melanie and learned that his real father's not Melvin at all. It's Marvin! Whenever I have that kind of problem, I just leave the clothes to soak overnight. Believe me, with the product I use... What? There's someone in there. What happened to you? Ha <laughs> ha! The guards found me in their private apartments, and they didn't like my explanation! <laughs> Can't. Red boots. Red boots. Halt! Who goes there? I tell you, there was someone. That's it. That's it. The the little zoom in is like so, uh, like self aware. What is this? There's a vacuum cleaner. What is this parodying? This is supposed to be a parody of something, right? A parody of what? What's the fucking joke? Infrared glasses. Like, inf infrared glasses. Of course. You oh, the mirror actually works. You see, it zooms in so you can notice that the... F the f what? You know, right? I suppose you work for the Duke? How come you... What are your duties in the castle? How come you know about vacuum cleaners? It's the answer to a servant's wildest dreams. We recovered it from another aisle. How come you know about vacuum cleaners? They're waiting for you in the test chamber. Yesterday, he went drinking with his buddies again. And when he came home, he thought the poodle was the doormat. I don't know why I put up with it. I don't know why I put up with it. Oh, don't tell me he ate it. No, he didn't. Blake. Shall I announce? The name's Jones. Don Jones. Died. Let Master Jones pass. Oh, a sweet meat. How kind of you to think of me. You pass after I get my sweet meat. But... But he already said... But he I... Pass after I get my sweet meat. 
You passed after I get my... I gave it. I gave it to him already. But I gave it to him already. But I gave it to him already. But I... You pass after I get my sweet meat. Nope. That's it. I hit my limit. You know, I just like, I just, you know, I don't. I just realized I was going to have to go look everywhere in order to figure out where the other sweet meat was. And I'm just like. The share zone voice. You can leave. <laughs> Bad games, jobs, friendships, cops if you're quick. Just walk out. Hit the bricks. Real winners quit. <laughs> General Mitty Tambers from the Fat Man. Now, Chrono Master is the pinnacle of entertainment. This was their most ambitious game. Oh, no, Dreamforge developed it. Ah, shit. I didn't know that. Oh, no. This seems to be CD audio. See, I guess Roger Zelazny wrote this. I've never seen this intro cinematic. But this game's story is wild. Brent Spiner is in this. I dead ass forgot that. Maybe this is SC fit. Yeah, this is Sound Canvas, isn't it? Yeah, Data's in this one. It was 19, 1995. TNG was over. <laughs> they needed work. Yeah, Ron Perlman was in there also. I just, for the moment, I could not remember who that was. But Brent Spiner, I know who that is. Oh yeah, strong Babylon 5 energy. Listen to your grandma. I want you to come with me right now. We can't wait for your parents. This is happening everywhere. Pirates, looks like several bands, maybe more. They won't leave witnesses. I fought their kind, Milo. They'll loot the planet, then burn it. We've got to get underground. Never forget what you've seen, Milo. You owe it to everyone who's about to die. I have to say, knowing the plot of the game from the demo, I didn't expect any of this. Like, I have no idea this correlates to the eventual story. Because the eventual story is wild. 
Okay, so I think that was the protagonist who was like nine. This is 50 years later. But he's clearly not 60. So I think we've done some time travel already. There's the sound. Not a single game in this era. This guy's ship is so good. I think it's called the Jester. Now that fucking kicked ass! You see the cursor? That's your robot, buddy. This is just making me want to play uh, <laughs> Buried in Time. Yeah, hell of an intro! Now, I'm not saying this game is bad. This game might be good bad. Also, I think this is like a kind of a Robin character who might stuck. I'm not convinced this is the SC-55. I think this might be uh, CD Audio again. Give me a sec. I really need to know. It's too low bitrate is the problem. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. But I really don't think it is. It's too it's too bit crushed. Exactly. I think it's I think it's it might be an SC55 originally that was then recorded as uh yeah, I don't think it's CD audio. There are no CD audio. There's no um, red book tracks on this disc because I, th I don't think there's enough room because of all the cinematics. It's like a 600 meg uh, data disc. So I think this is all bit crushed wave files. Anyway. Why is there no sound? Oh, that's right. This has such strong like French indie comic uh, fucking heavy metal energy. Hey, Sugar Pop, message incoming from the Terran Regional Representative. Tell the representative that I'm retired. The last thing I want to do is deal with a stuffed shirt. And, uh, don't call me Sugar Pop. Right. Oh, wise and powerful maker of universes. Listen, this call is coded emergency. Maybe we shouldn't just put her off. The trouble with stuffed shirts is that when they blow up, they make a terrible mess. Put the representative through. Mr. Corda. I know you are retired, but the style is a very sensitive, very secret matter. Why bother me? Surely you have people on your own staff who can deal with this, whatever it is. You are the ranking human specialist in both terraforming and the creation of pocket universes. You are the only person who may be able to solve a problem that could, without exaggeration, threaten the continued existence of hundreds of thousands of sentient beings. Please, continue. Within the last half year, two privately owned pocket universes... This is Ron Perlman. It's the guy's voice. Been shut down. Time, effectively, has ceased to function within them. We need you to restart the universes and find out who is responsible for these atrocities. Although you will be working for the old Terran... Okay, Scotty, so you just said Mass Effect. This game has a lore browser. Pretty tall order. You realize that the key for each pocket universe is a carefully hidden secret known only to the universe's designer. We do know. That's why we need the best. Are you saying that you can This might be the first game with an in-game lore explorer. If it is any comfort, there will be a large fee. Trying to get my gold lady? The fee doesn't matter. Not much at least. I'll admit. I'm interested in this from a professional point of view. Ron Perlman is doing such a good hard-boiled time detective uh, routine. The of Earths is named Charlie Bell. We have a contact number. You may wish to call him and see if he can give you a clue to the key of Earths. 
We can supply you with the coordinates for herbs and orants. Beyond that, you're on your own. I haven't seen Charlie in centuries. Yeah. Maybe I'll check with him. He's doing such a strong Elliot Gold thing. Time to function in stasis. I do know my job. I have some on board. Can I uh, draw on your account for supplies to get started? Within reason. Does this mean you're on the job? Write up a contract. And though I may be doing this because I want to know who's good enough to turn off universes, don't forget the zeros in the paycheck. Thank you, Mr. Corda. Contract will be forwarded. She's gone, Sugar Bob. Don't call me that. Okay, so this game is incredibly strong. We get an intro that shows us a character. I have no idea where that character comes back up. And then we get just dropped, you know, uh, 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 oh my god, what is the word for starting in the middle of the story? Uh, in media res. We get dropped in media res. I was going to say in media loca, which is also pretty good. Um, but... Uh, dropped into this guy's whole thing and yeah so there's a Cortana and then get the fuck ready for this that's right you have to physically turn around and explore your ship okay um, and then uh, let's see this is our so we actually we have a uh, it's Mass Effect we've got a star system explorer you know we gotta go places. We gotta do planetary surveys, okay? I did not mean to go, but we went. God, I love his ship. Yeah, I think we're gonna immediately disembark. Which is not what I intended. Oh, yeah. How do you like that shit? These motherfuckers had... The resonance tracer goes on magnetic north, dead on. I packed it with your things. It'll help you find the world key. Uh, boss, magnetic north is right where that uh, big scary looking statue is standing. Okay, I have two comments. The f I have several comments. First off, is it just me or did her voice actor just change completely when we dropped in here? Second, does she not now sound like a voice actor from an anime series? Like just, just, just dead on, perfect, um, yeah, just like from Pokemon or or whatever, right? Okay, so I I want to go back to the ship, um, and I don't remember how to do that offhand, but I do want to point out first that we, uh, the game has a sonic screwdriver. It's this thing here. Yeah, no, it's just. It's just definitely, it's just use that here. Also, can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? This, this, this is how the. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's good. And then, um, okay, you right click to cycle through your your stuff. You can do. Um, and then, do I? Can I go back? There we go. Yes. Look. Look at it! The fucking diegetic control panel! Ooh! Oh, it fucks so hard. Okay. So what do we have? So these are so this is a point and click adventure game, obviously, right? So these are all of our like things we can use to point and click. This here uh is I believe that's our bottled time inventory. And then yeah, we've got eight of these guys. Uh, the little floating AI girl is named the PDA, which is very good. Hello. <laughs> ah, yes. Perfect. This is the lore explorer. Uh, so we start here and we can, yeah, I shit you not. It's exactly what I said it was on the, sh by the way, on the ship, this is in full color, but when you're on the surface, you're getting the hologram version that's beamed into your eyes. So it's green. It's so good. <laughs> um, so yeah, you got, here's your contacts. Uh, this is what you've picked up on each planet. There's your ship. The Morning Star. Oh, that's the class. I think the name... 
pretty sure this is called the Jester, which is a great name for it. I uh, don't know what that does. And then how do we exit? How do we exit? Of course it's a Mac. Um, how do we damn exit? There we go. Anyway, if I remember correctly, the lore is that in this reality, uh, people have figured out how to make uh, how to make pocket universes, which literally are like you pay somebody an enormous amount of money and they make a universe for you. So it's like a mislinking book. Um, and the plot of the game is that somebody has uh, caused time to freeze in a whole bunch of these universes. So you'll notice there's like a crow here and he's just chilling. Oh, but when you get near him, the bubble of functioning time around you causes him to start moving again. But it's only when you're in proximity. Is that not great? Is that not great? Now, I never figured out how to make a lick of progress in this game. Oh, okay, that's how you go back to the ship. You just... <laughs> you can leave. But we were supposed to call Charlie Bell first, so let's do that. Yeah. Renee Corda? It's been ages. How have you been? Pretty well, all things considered. Been living quiet since I retired, but uh, now I'm onto something rather fascinating picked up an odd bit of work. It has to do with a couple of pocket universes that have been put into stasis without the owner's authorization. You designed one. A place called Herbs. Yeah, I designed Herbs. Can't tell you who for, though. Professional ethics, right, old buddy? Did anyone come to talk to you about your work, say, within the last year? No, no one. And even if anyone did, I wouldn't say a thing. I remember the terms of my contract and the ethics of my profession. The yeah. acting in this is actually, like, pretty good! Um, listen, is there anything at all you can tell me that might help? Well, since you're dealing with a universe in stasis, you're going to need bottled time. Brush up on its limitations. There are some tricky aspects, especially if the universe was fully functional and it was thrown into stasis. Thanks. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, one more thing. The other universe that's been turned off is called Orens. You know anything about it? Actually, I do. The designer was an alien named Nizam Rokhtar. Do you know her? No, no. Can you uh, tell me anything about it? Not much. She's good at what she does. I really like the Elliot Gold thing he's doing. <laughs> well, thanks, Charlie. I'll uh, let you know how it turns out. Jester, my sweet. See if you can find me a contact number for an alien named Nizam Rokhtar. I'm on it. Hey, do you really think I'm sweet? Buddy, she's physically incapable of fucking you. Uh, real quick, let's just uh, finish exploring the ship. I love the little... the, the chair. Oh, right. Yes, yes, my posting station, my posting station, my posting station, my posting station. This is how I sign on. This is how I log the fuck on. Anyway, PDA stands for Personal Digital Assistant. Just straight up. Okay. I guess that wasn't trademarked. I do love this design. It's very good. But again, feels like French comic books. Uh, let's see, uh, person, where's the other stuff I was looking for? Uh, <laughs> they have an entry in here about Passover. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember, uh, <laughs> okay, so I guess I don't have this function. Oh, okay, there's a bunch of other functions on the, uh, Sonic Screwdriver that I don't have. I'm trying to remember if there's anything, like, super spicy in here that I wanted to pull up. Uh... Eh, whatever. Teleportation cuffs. So, yeah. Lot of lore. Uh, let's go back over here and call this other person. Logging off! Really like the physically impossible uh, folding monitors very good um, try and remember okay there we go that's our uh, wait 
Luminosity? Oh, Gamma Correction. Okay. That, I suppose that makes sense. I'm trying to remember if any of this other stuff does anything. I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you want? I'm a busy artist. Universe is awake my awakening touch. I forgot about them. Honorable Nizam Rakta, I am Rene Corda. Charlie Bell suggested that I call you. Rene Corda, I have heard of you. Before you retired, you set some jewels in the heavens. But why does Charlie Bell wish you to trouble me? I have nothing in common with him beyond our mutual profession. I am researching a difficult situation. Two universes. Herbs and arms have been put into unauthorized stasis. Charlie says you designed arms. Anything you can tell me may help to reactivate the universe. These conversations go so slow. Truly, I would not deny one of my children, but Arons is in the care of her new owner. I have nothing to say about my desert child. Reason, flatter. Honorable Rakta, many lives are at stake, not only on Arons and herbs. But within any other universe, this terrorist may touch. This may be true, but such matters should be dealt with by the governments involved. Governments certainly are interested. If you assist me, the Terran regional government will be grateful. A gratitude that could translate into future opportunities. She's got a, a crisp beer there. An artist such as myself does not need to grub for work. Indeed, my respect for the ethics of my honored calling alone would keep me from giving up. You know what? Look at the size of the damn cheese she's got. Probably the size of her bank account. All right. Yeah, it's it's a really slow burn that that whole. Oh, there's like a full ass PC keyboard hanging out back there. This cockpit looks the way any cockpit actually would. Just a bunch of bullshit. All right, now let me see if I remember. There we go. Okay, so we got herbs and orins, and then that travels. This here, big herbs major. This lets you explore the solar system. That's right. You can actually drop at three different locations, uh, which I did not figure out when I was uh, uh, when I was playing this as a kid. Uh, so sculpture garden, city of ground zero, fort. I think Fort's where I want to go. I'd also like to point out real quick uh, that the uh, the depiction of the ship has a face. Look right there. It's really good. Bingo. I like that was just a, a convenient mobile landing pad. Okay, so this, this is fascinating. Uh, I think this is the first thing I ever figured out how to do in this game. Uh, can I save? Yes, I can. Okay, so we're in like a, a, a war zone here. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. There's one more... Uh, there's one more uh, tool I didn't show you, which is this thing. <laughs> there he is. That's all he does. I don't know what you're supposed to do with it. Okay, so... Trooper is dead. Hmm, pity. Uh, I believe we take the armor. Uh, how do I close this? There we go. Okay. This... I now have the trooper's outfit. I can't take that. Okay, nothing else I can do there. And then uh, we have a missile loader here. We have some missiles. We've got a button. And then I think if we walk over here... Wow, did you hear that weird, uh, like, uh, vibrato... Or not vibrato, the wow and flutter? Oh, n okay. No, that's a pitch bend. Okay, and then we have the panel here... So this is a puzzle, and I believe we're supposed to go hit the panel to rotate the dingus. There we go. Oh, you get close to it, and it gives you a little sub UI. Oh, get out! Okay, now, the, the question is, 
Now, wait a minute. Why is that working if time is frozen? Not sure. Anyway. So, we need... Wait, it reset? Why did it reset? Oh, so they don't have to re-render it from the other angles. <laughs> oh, what is it that we're trying to do? Fort entrance. Cannot remember. The only two directions we can go... Yeah, it's just these two screens. Okay, well, at any rate, uh, the idea is... Uh, there's not like a you just just plain use. Can I can I put the oh okay. Let me put the outfit on. There we go. Button button. Who's got the button? A simple button. There we go. A rocket could travel in stasis if you used bottle time on. Yeah, yeah, just a little, you know, just a bit of a, a hint there. Yeah, so we have to get some bottled time. We put that on the rocket. Boop. I can load that rocket from here. But the okay, then we press the button. Magnetic North is not nearby. Oh, that's right. This thing here is the resonance tracer. Okay. Uh, so we have to fire this at the right location, and I don't remember where that is. Uh, okay. I have the suspicion... Save. I have the suspicion that if I fire it here, I'm just going to kill myself. Oh, right! Right, right, right. That's what you're supposed to do. There's no way to know that that's what you're here to do. But yeah, you're supposed to use it to uh, destroy the... Uh, yeah. Well, you saw. So now we can... Uh, oh, wait. I can interact with the flag. Can I take it? I like how the, the word balloon is still there. Okay. I can't take it. Oh. Oh, there's a little secret hidden go this way. Ah. Uh, this is Chrono Master, a DOS video game from 1995. All right. And then I assume if I stand here... Oh, am I going to get... Oh, okay. Uh, well, then I guess I'll take the clothes off. How do I remove the clothes? There we go. Doesn't make much sense, boss. Why doesn't that make much make sense? sense? What? Oh, there's a quick save button in there. Hey, would you look at that? That doesn't make much sense, boss. Wh why? That doesn't make much. I can't you. I can't. Huh. Okay, well, um, I destroyed the statue that's blocking Magnetic North. There we go. That's how we get to the ship. Uh, this is not... This feels very much like Buried in Time. Um, Sugarbot, you, you, you just told me not to. Sugar pop. Okay. Go to the sculpture garden. A little unique landing animation for every location. Very good, very good. Okay, now we can go here. Well... Um, there we go. Yeah, for some reason you have to, like, walk all the way around. I don't know. Okay, now I should be able to use the resonance it's tracer. Not nearby. Ah, but it is! 
It's right. <laughs> That's right. You have to walk around this way. This is a peaceful place. Oh. oh. Put the flag on the flagpole. I don't know why, but... The fact I can do it means I'm supposed to do it. Oh, no. That's... Ah. I can't take... Not what I intended to do. Anyway. Why can't I... Oh! And then it just crashed! Cool. Video games! Video games! Video.games.tv.us Ha. <sighs> It was just going to irritate me until I lost my mind anyway. Anyway. Oh, this is the other game I was going to play. So Capstone uh, had one other title that I think may have been earlier than any of the other ones I played. Called Operation Body Count. I think this was their first uh, Wolfenstein 3D based game. I could be wrong about that. But at any rate, uh, it is very, very bad. I don't know why there's no audio here. There's supposed to be CD audio. Yeah, for some reason there's... Yeah. Somebody has broken into the... Somebody has taken over the UN building. Operation Body Count... We definitely want... To... Why is that master volume so low? Just me or do these not do anything? Game type. One. Oh my god. One, two, three, R, N, T. No idea. God. This is such a mess. So, you can tell this has stuff in common with uh, Corridor 7. It's got the same... Um, ceiling and floor, but no uh, distance light fall off. Everything's just dim to begin with. Maybe there's a little bit of distance light fall off. I don't know. Anyway. So, you start in the fucking sewers, and it looks like virtual hide lied, and you're like fighting mutant rats for some reason. So, like, right off the bat. The game just utterly invalidates its own premise that it's supposed to be, you know, a realistic... Yeah. I, I don't know. Like... Yeah. Yeah, man, I don't know. There's also a bunch of guns down here, you know? It doesn't make any fucking sense. At least it has a map. You know, I'm gonna give this a few more cycles. Now, I never had it with the CD audio, and boy does that enhance it. I like how the gun doesn't point towards the center for God knows what reason. Yeah, I believe this is the exit. No, that's right. This is just a little hell death hole. On your way to the exit. Why are we fighting giant mutant rats? Like, it doesn't make any sense. This game is ostensibly like a Rainbow Six. This is supposed to be like a counter-terrorist sort of thing. Like, did they forget what game they were making? There we go. And then that's the exit to the next level. Yeah, like, why are we fighting rats? And I think this is, like, lore-wise, I think this is supposed to be um, us 
entering the building through a sewer, right? And I understand the limitations of, like, you know, the Wolfenstein 3D engine, but still, it just doesn't really hold water. And the thing is that the demo did not start here. The demo started in the damn building. So, like, I played the demo, and it wasn't good, but it held a lot more water than this. Um, this is just a fucking mess, and I never knew what to make of it. Oh, that's right, I forgot. I was, that's, I had weapon number two up. Weapon number one is shotgun. Also, occasionally something will flicker into the lower left, and I don't know what that is. Yeah, did you see that? I think it's an enemy identifier. For some reason... And, yeah, the music. Again, I only had the FM music as as a child, so I didn't know about any of this. This is really something else. Oh, there we go. I think that's the exit right there. Oh, that's right. No, it's not an exit. It takes you into... Right, there's, like, slime monsters! For some reason. I think usually when I try and play this, I die. Um, I think that's... I, now that I think about it, I seem to recall that I... Unfinished bu What? What unfinished business? Huh? Wait. There's... There's missions down here? Don't you fucking tell me I have to kill all the enemies. What sense would that make? Do you see how, like, numb I feel? Oh, thank God. Wait, there's a little... little animation. Another... another level of this. Yeah, like, what is the fucking theme here? There's no cohesion to it at all. Okay, I think this is our infinite ammo weapon. So I'm going to use this for now really wish I knew what it was that was showing up in the lower left corner sporadically. I would say it's not even worth it to fight these things, but apparently it's going to punish me if I try and exit the level without killing enough stuff, even though that makes no sense since this is supposed to be an infiltration map. Right? Like, right? Like, like, right? Like, like... It feels like they made one game and then got told they had to make it another. And it had to, like, hastily alter everything. Like, this started life as a frickin' fantasy game or something. Well, and then, like, you know, there's some ambition here, right? Oh, the, 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 they took advantage of the sprites to fucking, um, to get some pipes there. Because it's supposed to be the sewers, right? It sort of makes sense. Also, I defy anyone to tell me what gun that is in the, the little picture down there. What kind of gun is that, you know? Like, which part's the barrel shroud? Is it the shoulder part that goes up? Oh, okay. Here we go. I I got injured earlier, and it put a blood spat on my screen, and it's just permanently there. Like, it's just not leaving. It's just permanently there. Oh, yeah, you know what? Somebody commented earlier that when you go... When you, when you look against walls at certain angles, you can see through them. And you know what? That's true. Yeah, yeah, it, like, breaks through the wall for a moment. <sighs> this is almost cool! What are we fucking doing back in the green shit again? I feel like I remember this being the correct way to exit. Why are we fighting giant rats? 
Yeah, I think this is the exit. Let's go to the penis room and giant rat, giant enemy crab, and no, no, go to hell. Go to hell. Eat shit. Nope. You deserve nothing. This is incredible. Like this... Yeah, here's our our tactical espionage counterterrorism ass. You know, oh, we have Metal Gear Solid at home. You know, Rainbow Six isn't out yet, but don't worry. Uh, Tom Clancy's gonna shit himself when he sees what we have. And then it's this. Like, fuck off. Fuck off. Nobody wants you here. There we go. Oh my god. Every level gets a little bit brighter, right? What? What? What the damn hell was that noise? And like the music is kind of good. You know? All these swamp things like go to hell you see it's just you you can't not get mad at it right you're just you're you want to just play the damn game but it's so dumb and makes so little sense you know yeah now i've got some splats on my screen that's real helpful thank you thank you so much for that you know i'm running low on ammo this is the only capstone game that makes me mad Oh, come on. Really? I'm... Where's my gun? I just pressed two like 20 times. Holy shit. Oh my god. Yeah? Yeah? Holy shit. Okay, you know what? Um, <sighs> the difference in energy between... The difference in energy between that game and Corridor 7 is just astonishing, right? Right? Like, the game's so bad, but it seems like a much simpler, easier target to hit. It seems like it, it, it seems like it should be, you know, so, ah, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um... Ugh. Anyway, uh, give me one sec. What is this command? Okay, that's the command. Man, sorry, I'm just a little, uh, whew. B, C, C, D. There it is. B, C, C, D dot E, X, E. Okay. I'm trying to find the damn cheats for this thing. What the fuck? How does this work? I'm going to try this one time. I'm going to move on to something the fuck else. This game has no idea what it's trying to be. Let 
With some of these, I feel like it would just have been better to show you the damn demo version. Uh, yeah, no dice. Ah, fuck that. Okay. Move on to something else. Ugh. Ugh. Let's go see if Tyrion still has... Let's go see if it's still Christmas. Uh, oh yeah. Christmas mode. Christmas has been detected. Activate Christmas. Yes. On Christmas. Wow, why is the music so quiet? Happy New Year to anybody who is not on the west coast of the America. 45 more minutes here. I always thought that Tyrion's approach to uh, weapons was, was fascinating and uh, uh, unique. The uh, You get stuff like uh, soda... You know, you've got the the like Vulcan cannon here. That's pretty good. But if you uh, if you let go of the space, if you let go of fire repeatedly instead of just holding it down, you get this extra burst of machine gun fire at the beginning. That's just a little bit extra. Uh, additionally, uh, you also get an off weapon that's not like a consumable. So you get these missiles. And what's also neat about that is you've got two of them. So this is the arcade mode, so I just picked up two of them automatically, but in the normal mode you got to buy these. So you can put different things in your left and right gun pods, and you've got to like manage power consumption to make sure that you don't run out of juice if you're firing them all at once. So like there's a lot going on with it. I always really liked it. Uh, I don't have the patience for shmups to... to to finish them, but if I did, this would be one of the ones I would finish. This and Raptor. Oh, and then uh, also the uh, the add-on weapons uh, usually have the quality of um, having an alternate fire mode. Uh, this one doesn't, I think, just because it's the missiles, but other ones have an alternate fire mode that uh, basically you've got like four or five different toggles you can hit, you know, and, and you can redesign your ship all these different ways uh, to, like, change your game experience. And it's just something you don't normally see in shmups. Not to mention the fact that <clears throat> this actually has, like, Halo-style health, where uh, if you get hit, it doesn't do any permanent damage unless you get hit enough to take out all your uh, shield, at which point um, further attacks could uh, start to damage your underlying armor. And... Um, that, that's permanent. You have to actually get it healed. But it actually, like, it gives stakes to... It gives stakes to the experience um, in a way that I, I just don't get from normal shmups, unfortunately. Like, I wish I loved shmups. I just unfortunately don't. Like, they just feel so thin to me. I play 30 seconds. I've seen the whole game. Massive Christmas enemy has been detected massive Christmas enemy. But it means you can do stuff like this. You can build up your ship so you can just deliver these, like, uh, you know, alpha strikes like Mech Warrior if, you, uh, if you're patient a little bit. Charge up some energy. And, of course, the fact that uh, the bosses have, like, destructible components is super cool. I don't know. I, just, I don't know any other shmup that, uh, that quite has as much meat on its bones in my eyes. A little bit of a little bit of bullet hell going on. There we go. That's ah, just really juicy. T 
Tyrion has always been special. This is a fact. <sighs> Particularly because of the damn music. See, I, I always liked Raptor Call of the Shadows. I know, I think a lot of other people don't consider it that good a shmup, but I always thought it was one of the one of the great bangers. Um, but it doesn't have any sort of narrative uh, or anything to really keep me engaged other than the music being very good. That's a side weapon, right? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Now we have a full complement of, of weapons. Right, there's like there's like six different hard points on your ship. Oh, and this has got the thing where you gotta uh, stop and, and destroy some stuff before you can continue. Always liked that. I'm like it's not too visually confusing, you know. I don't know. I just I like it. I was always pro Tyrion. I should really sit down and just play all the way through this game in campaign mode one of these days. Parts of it are hard, like this this shit. Like it's really hard to, to actually destroy anything here. But the saving grace is that it's like playing a really, really hard shmup where it's really, really hard to avoid getting hit, minus the part where it matters if you get hit. Like, oh no, you get hit. As long as you don't get absolutely pounded. You know, as long as you don't get hit by, you know, six enemies at once or, or anything like that, um, then no serious harm has been done. And you, and it's, you know, you're not like, well, shit, uh, I didn't play perfectly, so now I don't get to continue playing the game, which is, you know, what happens in a normal shmup. They're so punishing. Uh, these things are really hard to kill. I guess I just have to hit them with my... Uh, Like, again, like, QOL features in a shmup are, like, they seem like that's what no, what people don't want. You know, they want it to be, like, every shmup is supposed to be Dark Souls, and I just, I could never get on board with it. Especially because they're a lot meaner than Dark Souls. Heavy missile launcher. Oh. Atom bombs. Cool. Well, that's a lot of atom bombs. Wow, Christmas kind of makes a mess of everything. Oh, I got the secret level. Hooray. Wow, that boss died really fast. Is it a sub-boss? It might be a sub-boss. Now that I think of it. It was. Okay. Oh, nope. That was the boss. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. Like... I don't have a problem with I don't have a problem with people liking hard games but I've been thinking for decades because of games like this what if there was a shmup that I liked you know um, what you know what could we do with the shmup the basic shmup concept that hasn't yet been done you know because everything that I've seen all the innovations I'm aware of are shit like Ikaruga which is very 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 cool like I think it's extremely dope in concept, but it doesn't really make it more fun for me. It's just a different way for it to be hard. And I'm like, can we... Is there any way we can make this more narrative-focused? Because that's really what does it for me. I want to finish a game if it has a story. Um, and one that's not just cutscenes. Like, is there any way we can make anything we do with our little ship more meaningful? Rather than just fly forward, shoot little other ships? Like... 
can there be any greater depth to it? Can we do something other than just shoot? Whoa! Damn, son, did I... Oh, strawberries, but I want the strawberries. I got the damn mega cannon, apparently. Which I don't like. Seems very strong. Oh, what is that? Rear weapon power-up. Oh, okay. I didn't know those existed. This may be the longest I've ever actually played Tyrion in one sitting. Um, that's not true. I played the campaign mode much more, but that was 15 years ago, so... Yeah, you know, and there you go. Like, uh, fucking... So, yeah, like... Yeah, Raiden, ha Raiden, whatever it is, has the narrative, right? But again, as far as I've seen, it's just a movie. It's an audiobook that's playing while you play an arcade game from the late 80s. And... People seem to like it. That's great. But I'm just saying, can we do anything with these sh little ships other than just fly up and shoot? Is there any... Can we... Ah. Is there something more? Well, I guess that's the Mega Cannon. I don't like it. I'm going to replace that as soon as I can. Yeah, <laughs> you can fly sideways and shoot, asshole. <laughs> that was that was in character. I was not calling you an asshole. <laughs> oh, I don't like this weapon either. Give me a different weapon. 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 Pawn. The music in this game is so based. Morning, Christmas. Yeah, I'm about to blow up. There we go, a better weapon. Oh! If I can just kill something, all those ornaments are armor repairs. Ah, I'm out of energy. Wah! 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 I don't seem to have a rear weapon right now at all. Oh, shit! I think that was an armor upgrade! Ha <laughs> ha, fuck! Ah, whatever. I don't think I can get to the jukebox from in here, right? No, I can't. Uh, hang on. File management, media... Yeah, I don't think... This does not immediately offer a way to do that. One moment, let me modify the run file. Uh, Run.bat. 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 There it is. Yeah, I don't think... Is there any... Okay, we'll just, uh... So, last year 16, set up. No, Aurora, I think you're completely right. Um, you're, you're totally correct. I just wonder if there's any way to modulate that. Like, can we, can we... Can we make them not move all the time? And does that help? I do have a comment. I do have a suggestion. I do have a, a, a case in point. Um, uh, but first... What's with the fade? What? What? There we go.
song bangs fully. No, it's not it's not a visualizer, it's just uh fun screen hacks. I wish it was a visualizer, it should be. Okay, let's move on. All the songs are good. We're going to go hit the best ones. Is this one? Hang on. There it is. I think if you spun this at any dance, everybody would go nuts. DJs are sleeping on Tyrion the level. It's like organ runs. Ah, oh, it's so good. Okay, but you could remix it. You could you could remix this. Exactly. Crawl out of your hole in the ground and listen to DOS music, you losers. You gotta get some fresh stuff. Less vinyl, more ad lib. For some reason, the songs are, like, fading out.
Sorry, I'm... I'm trying to figure out... There's a... <laughs> you know, Casey, um, I, uh... I never composed a song in my life. Um, I had tried on everything. Like I know how to use all the DAWs. Um, the first song that I ever composed was an ad lib tracker, and I got to be honest, like it, there's a steep learning curve. But due to the, due to the limitations it imposes, honestly, I found it to be uh, much more approachable than many other things. Just a, a, a thought. I have an OC remix cover of composition in queue which was the last song that i played um well not the one i just played but anyway and it does not appear to be on youtube it's just like a piano cover But it's not on OS Remix anymore. And I don't know who performed it. It's really good. Yeah. Well, I'd like to know why they deleted it. This is not a rare find. At least I don't think it is. Here, let me check. Oh, is it? Oh, it is. Wait, why do I have two copies of this? This is the exact same file, you're correct. Yeah, it's a rare find. Oh, Disturbed did it. They did other stuff I liked. Maybe they didn't. That is the only remix they seem to have on the site. Well, a anyway, at any rate, uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing, uh, but you can go look it up on the YouTube. Um, God, I could... <laughs> Well, no, I mean, like, I have... Sorry. I ha I apparently downloaded this song back in 2002, and then a year later, I downloaded it again under a different name, but now it's back to the original name. So I'm like, buh? So, um, but I these two files, they were... It was back in 2003. So, yeah, anyway. <sighs> what else do we have here? You know what? Uh, I just saw this game here called Hugo 3, which is not Hugo's Haunted Mansion, or whatever the fuck it's called. But that is reminding me that the other day I was thinking about Nightmare 3D, which has the worst box art imaginable. But also is just a really bad game. We'll turn off. I'm gonna go get the box art. It's so good. This box art is so good. This box art looks like the back of D-Zone. Right, okay, so. The first thing you notice is, like, obviously it looks like a disjointed me mess. And then you notice, like... 
it looks like a bootleg, right? And then like the, the there's some word art text up there, and yeah, it's just it's just it's such a frenetic mess. And um, there's like the computer wizard in the upper left, and then you notice like there's like some some like rando like Greek columns back there. And like the axe dude, you just get the vibe immediately that he's not in the game. And uh, the bat is like, anyway, they're clip art. They're obviously clip art. Like it took me 25 years to notice this. They're clip art. That's why the quality of the gun that you see there at the bottom is so poorly matched because they they had no art skills whatsoever and they needed to make the cover for the game so they just grabbed some random clips off a clip art cd and there were no guns they could not find a single gun from a first person perspective so they had to draw that and they obviously could not draw whatsoever so it is the worst drawing of a gun you've ever seen and then they obviously couldn't draw hands right so what they did is they went through the entire clip art collection until they found a hand that was in something that sort of resembled holding a gun shape and then just mirrored it and put them like this and that's what you're looking at there it i've been thinking about this box art for well over i said 25 years i've been playing the game for yeah i played the game 25 years ago uh the box art i didn't see it the first time until probably 10 years ago so i've been thinking about this for 10 years and it only just clicked with me the other day that it's all clip art. It is one of the ugliest pieces of graphic design I have ever seen. Uh, it is normal to hold a gun with two hands. Not like that. <laughs> yeah, no, like everyone is taking one HP damage every like three to four seconds. You're just like, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, and you're slowly dying. Yeah, if you held a gun like that, you'd break some fingers. Anyway, yeah, so this is like a Wolfenstein, except it is written from scratch. It is not based on the Wolfenstein engine. It was written by one guy named David P. Gray, who continued to maintain it and has released it for Windows. You can buy it on his website. And it will run on your personal computer now. <sighs> The bad guys, no, the, the art, the game was not made by the people who made the box art. It's a shareware game, so it was made by this one guy. And then um, it was just distributed through a bunch of different distributors who made their own art for it. Ah! So yeah, this is, uh, this is its own thing. Oh, I thought it was Krimis for a second. You know what, let's um let's give this a few more cycles. That might be a bit too many cycles. Yeah, just uh just look up Nightmare 3D, it's spelled N-I-T-E. <clears throat> Pardon me. When you kill an enemy, they turn into a little potted flower. Uh your health indicator is uh how like like zombified you look down there and you can see just how high quality the shooting mechanics are they're great I think that Frankenstein had a knife uh, okay you do have limited ammo and I think if you run out of ammo you're just screwed I think you just you lose so don't do that um and an interesting thing about this is, like, you start out with this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad gun. And then later, um, you get more guns. There's a total of three, I think. And what you're actually... I cannot fucking believe I remembered that from 20 years ago. Uh, what you're supposed to do is actually... Um, you're supposed to use different guns for different types of enemy. So there's like a... Oh, that's a Moomy. Um, there's a, uh, 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 there's a, like a conventional pistol that fires bullets that's a hit scan, and it's more effective against certain, certain types of enemies. Let's just pick up all this stuff. I think that was a health potion. Yep, got a health potion. This music's honestly not, not half bad. Uh, 
Oh, is it silver bullets? Yeah. Oh, uh, vagueness. Um, I do have a coffee. It's, it's just coffee slash uh, cathode ray dude. Let me make absolutely sure that's true. Yeah. Yep, slash cathode ray dude. Uh, and I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, like, honestly, you do have to give him a little bit of credit. You gotta hand it to him. Like, this is remarkably competent, all things considered. You know, like... I assume he did all the art himself, too, so, like, you sort of have to forgive it looking... <laughs> it's it's programmer art, right? Uh, I mean, look at this awful mitt you've got down here. Uh, for what, for holding your gun with. Uh, you know, it's pretty dire, and, uh... Like, the sound effects are, like, better than they could be. Shit. You know, I wish, I wish you could turn at intervals less than, you know, 10 degrees, but, like... Yeah, you know, the game's a lot better than the box art, I'll tell you that much. I gotta say, I'm actually digging this music. I don't think the loop is very long, but it's a pleasant little song. Yeah, I think the whole loop is just a few seconds long. When I was a kid, I don't think that I... I don't know that I even had the music on. I was a pretty terrible little kid, and, uh... I would often just, like, ignore whole chunks of video games. Like, I wouldn't want... I never watched cinematics, ever. Not only did I not read the manual, I never watched a cinematic. I never knew what was going on in a game. Um... You know, never read the readme to try and understand it. And, like, a lot of the time, I was upset that I didn't know this information, but I would not pursue finding out this information. It's dumb. Um, oh, um, also, this game has a bunch of... I think it has a bunch of esoteric little systems, because, like, I've been filling up my eye quotient and my, like, white sphere quotient, and I don't have the faintest idea what those do. It's just a kitchen here. I need a red key. Sure, yeah. Uh, fucking... You can go up and downstairs. A little sound effect. Oh, there's a dumb waiter. Oh, I get it. We go down. Little adventure game mechanics. Use the red key. We get an ID card or something, and then we take the dumbwaiter up. See, it's like an elevator. You know what? The uh, left and right... Oh, no. I thought the left and right channels were flipped, but no, there was a guy over there. Yeah, like... You, you have to hand it to them. Honestly, quite impressive. Enjoying this music. I'll jam that cat. Okay, there's no cheat codes or anything, and I don't want to, uh... Ten minutes! Wait. Cheat modes? I just said there were no cheat codes. Oh, this is sick. You just start out and... Yeah, he got it. Yeah. No, that's adorable. I love that. Okay, if you... If you hold down shift and press the numpad plus, you, uh, um, it refills your health, so that's a cheat. Hey, you know what I just discovered? The reason I have such, I'm so inaccurate is because I'm in run mode. 
if you hold down shift oh my god it's so smooth wait there's a cheats menu oh 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 Oh, right! I remember this! The four cheats! Omniscient, Omnipotent, Omnificent, and Omnif... Omnifarious. Bingo! Bingo! <laughs> there we go! So yeah, that's the, uh, like, the magic gun, or the, that's uh, the science gun, that's the magic gun, and that's the bullet gun. Oh, and that's just fast, I guess. Cute. Delightful. You ever considered, what if Sonic the Hedgehog had a gun? Let's explore the idea. Eh. Why am I moving so much, like... Oh, <laughs> one shot, one killed that motherfucker. Wow, this gun is good. I heard it was good. Also, I just... Can we talk for a moment about how the HUD just has these sick-ass gargoyles hanging out uh, in the corners? Just overlapping part of the game screen. Sure. Makes the game look doper, so it's the right call. Yeah. It's actually a pretty satisfying gun with like a good good firing sound effect. I like it. Whoa. Can you be my angle or my devil? You know, maybe god mode makes them not attack or Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. Left shift makes you go slow. Right shift makes you go fast. What if you combine them? Can you go slow fast? It feels incredibly bad. Uh, yeah, uh, this, this game... Um, <sighs> this game is from the era when no FPS had... Uh, uh, ceilings or floors because it required an extra step in, um, it required an extra level of, uh, uh texture projection that was, uh, very expensive unless you were John Carmack. Like, Wolfenstein didn't have ceilings or floors either, um, but, uh, one of its adaptations did, Rise of the Triad. I guess we have infinite ammo. This is how I used to play video games. Just all cheats on. Let's go. 24 hour sleep cycle. It's bedtime, bitch. Yeah, so actually not nearly as bad a game as I remembered. Oh, did Blake's... Really? Did Blake Stone have it? I did not remember that. So it damn did. Okay. Ah, shit. Well, thank you. Uh, hello, Eekpai. Yes, the Interposer theme bops. We opened the, uh, we opened the, uh, 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 the stream by, by listening to it. Uh, what else was I going to do? I was going to bring up one thing you can do to modulate Little Ship Game to make it more interesting. And that is a game which someday I may complete.
Jake Stone. I would love to see this game remade with voice acting. Thank you. Happy New Year. In four minutes. I can't sip for four minutes. No, I won't be sipping. I won't be sipping until t until 12 midnight. The dialogue in this is like super stilted, but the uh, the story is good. God, the music. Let's see to communicate. Uh, this is actually non-alcoholic champagne. I had the idea. I thought, you know what? Uh, I still don't feel comfortable with alcohol, and um, I haven't had any in a month. Certainly not feeling it. You know, like, not feeling... It's not been a problem, so uh, I'm just going to continue on this path for the time being. Um, so I thought to myself, is there non-alcoholic champagne? And apparently there is. Uh, so in three minutes, I'm going to sip with two peas. Uh, it's a mimosa. You mix half and half champagne and orange juice. Um, it's a tradition for me since I was uh, very young, actually. I actually I adore mimosas, but wine in recent years has started making me sick as a dog. <sighs> but yeah, I've never tried... I've never tried... Uh, the non-alcoholic champagne so yeah um be very excited to see how this plays out anyway uh okay so what this is is a uh, space game uh you're in a little ship you can fly in all directions so it's not a shmup at all but still um and uh yeah so you've got you got uh uh, dialogue trees, right? So you can call, you can tell this guy he's ugly, which is fine. This does not interfere with the plot. More ugly than what I see on my screen? That is very difficult to accept. <laughs> I, I always loved how hard this guy went on his insult. Just like, wow, you're, you're a generational horror. <laughs> you know what's weird? And I've had headphones on, so maybe I just haven't heard it. I have not heard a damn firework. I think I heard one, like, three hours ago. So I don't know. Anyway, who are you? Uh, so yeah, this guy's an alien. So this guy's a cloaking device, and I think you get a cloaking device from him. Oh, right. So this game uses coordinates. So this game has a um, this this is a, a, a realistic space exploration game where the world is actually the size of of the galaxy. Oh, there we go. It's midnight. Happy New Year. Wait a minute. Don't I have anything? Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, that's not that bad. I think I like that. I'm going to have more of that. Anyway, uh, Happy New Year, everybody. It's been a rough one for me. Uh, you, you probably watched the video. You know what's up. Um, oh, there's the fireworks. It's uh, It's been a rough one for me. Um, for a multitude of reasons, uh, separate from anything I, I mentioned in the video. It's been many things. Um, it's been a weird year, and it continues to be difficult. Gay as ever, even on difficult days. Um, and uh, it was really, really wild when, you know, I published that video. I don't know if anybody here checked but if you're worried about me financially, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, my Patreon 
went through the roof. Um, you know, more than make up for what I lost, but also, like, yeah, you know, I am a bit worried about how the next couple months are going to go as far as, like, video output. I think I'm going to, I think I've got it under control. I think I'm going to be able to go back to, you know, producing, um, without too much trouble, but it's still been, it's been, um, <sighs> It's been, uh, it's been weird. I have not, I have not, uh, oh, no, no. Well, okay, I will say this. I do worry a bit. You know, I got a bunch of people that, that, that pledged, you know, a buck or two. And I, every time I see that, I'm like, I don't, obviously, like, yeah, that's, if you have 2,400 patrons, then a good chunk of them are going to be a buck or two, and that absolutely counts, and that's fine. That's the whole way Patreon is supposed to work. It's a brilliant idea. You know, imagine if if everybody in, like, just California gave one person somewhere a dollar, then you'd have a th person who now has $30 million, but all of those people didn't really feel it at all. Hmm. Kind of makes you think. Makes you think about, hmm, hmm. Maybe there's more money concentrated in places than necessarily there needs to be. Hmm, has anybody considered this? I think this is a new idea. But anyway, uh, uh, it. But every time I see a flood of people, you know, if I if I publish about how I'm having, if I post about how I'm having trouble with things like the freaking plumbing or whatever, and I see a flood of one dollar or two dollar patrons, the thing I always worry about is the thing that people occasionally tell me about, which is they'll say, well, I'm unemployed, I'm on a fixed income, I'm on, you know, whatever, uh, but I wanted to throw you a buck or two, and I'm just like, oh my god, you don't need to do that, your problems are bigger than mine. Like, yeah, I know, we don't need to compare problems, but I think at that point, I think at some point, it's reasonable to compare problems, you know? And I've tried to make it clear before, like, please don't, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, let the let the people with tech jobs <laughs> take care of me, okay? Take care of yourself first. But uh, I tell people that, they do it anyway, whatever. I don't know what to say. Um, so uh, I can't stop, I can't stop you. I can't stop anybody from sending me a dollar, you know? And uh, hey, you know what? After all, it is just a dollar, so... Um, um, I have continued to have health problems that I have not talked about and I'm not going to talk about. I hope they're not nothing that matters. That's as much as I'm going to say on the topic. But uh, it does mean that I think very frequently about, hmm, what happens if I can't do this anymore? And um, I guess when you have a job... J-O-B, job type job, um, you know that no matter how cushy it is, no matter how anything it is, if you get proper useless, they're going to cut you loose. Like, oh, sure, if you've got something really nice, maybe you're going to get a week, a couple weeks, something like that. But at some point, they're just going to be like, you know what, actually, bud, um... You know, we got to replace you. We need somebody to do this thing. Because every business wouldn't... They have as few employees as they could possibly manage. Even the good ones are like that. And if you're not serving a purpose, they need to slot somebody else in to do that job. It's just... It's literally just a fact, right? And they can't keep paying you and then hire somebody else. And now they're paying double for the same position. And then when you come back... When you're ready to work again, what do you, you come back, someone's doing your job. What do you do, right? There's no solution. And we shouldn't need to rely on jobs in order to simply survive and feed ourselves. Um, and uh, so it's just a simple mechanical fact that a job could not give you unlimited time off. They can't put up with indefinite, you know, low, you know, performance, etc. And of course, you know, what job can allow you to sit around for three months and then, you know, come running into the room wheezing like, okay, all right, I got it done. I finally got, here you go. You know, and then they get to evaluate whether it was worth the wait. And um, that's something I get to do. It is an incredible luxury. And the fact that uh, I know, you know, I can't take advantage of this, right? I can't, I can't take it for granted. But 
it has been made abundantly clear to me that if I were to announce I will be on hiatus for six months, um, and then I might produce something when I'm back, that at least two-thirds, three-quarters of my patrons minimum, if not just most of them, uh, would stick around. Uh, and it is kind of utopian. It is kind of an amazing way to, to, to run things that unfortunately benefits only me. And it's one of those things where it's, it's so nice that you, you're almost like, man, I don't want this. It's just a reminder that like everybody else doesn't get it. And I don't need to feel guilty about it. That's not the point. The point is just that it is what it is. Um, and what it is, is an unavoidable bummer. But with that said, um, it has been so weird. I looked, I was looking at my videos the other day and I was looking at some that I made last year this time and they felt like they were five years ago. They felt like they were eight years ago. I'm like, wait, that was, huh? You know? Uh, I've changed so much stuff in my life, like my studio layout has changed three times. The way that I shoot videos has changed, and the tone that I use and whatnot has changed. It's like, I don't recognize anything I did last year. Not to mention the year before that. It's like another planet. And uh, it, it it's had the weird effect that, you know, becoming a YouTuber has had the very weird effect of making my years feel very long. You know, I, I thought you know, ah, what would a, a year in review for me look like? And I'm like, I can't begin to remember all the shit that happened last year. Like, it's it's just gone. Um, it feels like 2023 ran for like three, four years. And I for just, it's just a blur. I know I was doing stuff all the time, but damned if I can remember what any of it is. Uh, I know I liked a lot of it, you know, and there was more good stuff than bad. Um, and, um, the, uh, the weird thing is like trying to figure out what, what to do next because, uh, like I, I just, you know, obviously next I just do more things, right? Like, um, at the moment I've got several things in the pipeline. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you a, a, let me show you something I'm working on. <sighs> Here we go. This is it. Studio mode. No, that's not it. Studio mode. Be do. The video toaster video is on hold, actually, if I'm honest. Um, and there are very specific reasons for that. Not on hold. It's complicated, okay? I'll just put it that way. It is damn complicated. The thing you have to understand is that the Video of Toaster video... Okay, I was going to talk about that. The Video of Toaster video is my magnum opus. It's something that uh, I've been wanting to do since before I started the channel. I haven't had the resources to do it correctly this whole time. And uh, I wanted to... I wanted to cover the thing many years ago when I didn't even know how to use it myself. And so, well, I mean, I talked about this, I, I think in the, right. Yeah. I talked about this in the, the, the video about where, you know, what's up with me. I basically that, um, I shot that whole video. I edited it. I almost finished it. And then I threw it all away cause I wasn't satisfied. And, um, Daria is not pleased with me. Sorry. Love you, hon. Um, she understands though. It's the way it has to be. But what I said is that um, I have to do it exactly. Nightwheel gets it. This is important to me. It is personally important to me. I have no deep history with this thing, but I decided that I was going to fix a problem that had, you know, it, it feels like misinformation about this thing has been so rampant for so long compared to its genuine significance that I decided it was a holy mission to set it right. And I've been thinking about how to do it for eons. And the video that I had planned is as much a tone poem um, and a, a ref, you know a reflection on society, uh, I would hope, 
as it is uh, a demonstration of, of how the, the video toaster itself works. And the problem I found is that that's a really, really complicated path to, to, to walk and that um, it's really easy to to just get lost and forget what you're doing. And that's what I did. The first couple times I wrote the script, I, I just couldn't figure out what it was I was trying to say. And then I ended up chucking the whole thing because in the end I felt that I had... Uh, I had um, I had lost track of what my message was, and that while the resulting video was serviceable in several ways, it wasn't what it needed to be. And there are other videos where I would have ignored this and said, ah, no, just press on, like release something. You know, any coverage is better than no coverage. But for this particular thing, I said, no, it has to be done perfectly because if there is something that that you know. A lot of my videos I feel kind of throwaway about. Like the WVHS video, for instance, that needed to get covered because nobody else had done it. As far as I know, I still have the only video about that, but I don't like it at all. It was very ambitious, and I screwed up every single part of it. And um, that's not even me dunking on myself. It's been like two years. I still don't like it. It's not what I wanted, and it's it wasn't popular. It was not popular. People did not like that video. I, I don't think I got more than 100,000 views on it in like three, you know, two years, three years, whatever. Um, and I just didn't get, I did not get the response that I had hoped for, you know. Um, I'll be honest, I had hoped to get a million views on it. I had hoped that that was going to be a breakout video for me and that it would uh, uh, massively increase my, my profile. Not that that's why I did it, but I did think that was going to happen. And when it didn't, I was greatly disappointed. And if I had my druthers, I would just redo that video. But I don't sit around going like, you know, when am I gonna when am I gonna finally set right what I got wrong? Because that one's just not that big a deal. It is documented, okay? If you don't like the style of the video, if it's not that entertaining, okay, well that sucks. But the information is there and I've done my part. With this, I feel that if somebody doesn't sit down and go, holy shit three hours and 45 minutes about the video toaster. I don't want to watch all that. And then five minutes into it, they've forgotten about that. And then three and a half hours later, they're like, holy fuck, I just watched the whole thing. If that does not happen to more than 100,000 people in a week after I release this, I will consider my job not done and, and start thinking about, okay, how do I unfuck this? How do I do this better? Because I did it wrong. That's the goal. I want to make something that is the best thing I've ever made on this particular subject. It's informative, that's, you know, a personal opinion, that's, uh, uh, yeah, many things, many things. And um, I just have to get it right. So I'm doing other videos first before I come back to that one. Well, right, exactly. The footage in the other house, you have to understand I had no other way to get access to a widescreen CRT. I had no other way. It was impossible. And so what happened was I got there, you know, and I had not, I hadn't had an opportunity to go there and like scout. I had one chance to go get this footage, right? And so I went there and I don't think he's watching, but my friend uh, whose house it was, um, was stuck at work the whole time and like on a phone call. So, like, I was struggling to get takes done in between him having to do, like, the nightmare support call of his life. It was horrible. He was on this call for, like, 16 hours um, and didn't finish it until, like, the next day. It was just, it was a one, one in a million chance that just lined up perfectly. So, I'm there. I'm, like, desperately trying to get takes done. Um, I'm exhausted. I can't remember my lines. I don't have a teleprompter. I've got no lighting. You know, I get there, like I set up my lights, it's just, it, just nothing. They just get eaten by the room. And I'm like, well, what do I do? I can't preview my footage. I don't have a laptop with me. I can't use his computer. He's on it, you know? So, like, I don't know what I'm shooting. You know, I'm filling up cards. I'm running out of space. I've got, like, three cameras there. I'm running them all by myself. I've got no help. Um, and I get one chance, one opportunity. I can't do it again. So I just have to press on and try and get it done. And I get home, I look at the footage, I'm like, oh my god, it's horrible. It's just awful. And that's it. I've got to roll with it. I'm working a 40-hour-a-week job. And um, 
uh, I'm, I'm working a 40 hour a week job. I had to make a three hour trip down to Portland, you know, cost me, you know, a hundred dollars in gas to go there and back. I had to sleep there, I think. Um, and, um, I'm managing all these other things. I, you know, and then I have to go home and, and make time to edit it and whatnot. And like, I've got limit. I had just everything, everything. Yeah. I had to set up three tripods, I think. And three tripods and lights and the audio gear and uh, get the the f fucking WVHS synchronized, you know, with my I, I had to run the tape back and because I had to do take after take because I had no teleprompter take after take after take after take after take and every time I've got to run the VHS tape back um, and then hit play again and uh, try and line it up and then when I you know screw it up again like it happens I gotta run it back again run it forward again it's just wouldn't end and yeah so i get home and i find out the footage is just garbage and i'm like what can i do you know um and i kind of said you know when i went full time with this i'm like i don't ever want to do that again i don't ever want to i don't ever want to shoot a bunch of footage and then go oh well you know it would take me another week to uh i would have to wait a week go you know delete all my footage wait a week go back and do it all again um so instead i'm gonna go with this crap footage that sucks you know it's just like all washed out and like the pacing is off and and all this stuff like yeah I mean, i've gotten a lot better at pacing since then you know that's another thing i've really learned how to trim the fat on my videos considerably when something doesn't feel right you know when i watch the resulting video and it doesn't feel like feel right i'm able to go like no that's not it. That's not it. We just have to rewrite it. And every time I do that, I come away from it going, oh, okay, that's what happened. And I can't tell what the problem is ahead of time, right? Um, I'll, I just take it and I go, let's just start changing words. You know, let's just delete a paragraph and just start rewriting it from scratch. Just try to go faster, you know? And then by the time I'm done, like something's clicked and I'm going like, okay, that's, that's what's missing. I need to go straight from A to B and I was going through D on the way and like it just, it's complicated really complicated and um uh so that and like i had another video which was my uh, my my the one i did about the couple of digital cam digital cameras were like uh uh the time that i decided to go do test shots with them ended up being this incredibly dreary day out of nowhere i was not prepared for it and again when i found out my footage was no good i'm just like well let's just roll with it because we don't want to come out here again I should have just gone out there again. And once again, the fact that I don't have to navigate a fucking day job means that it's now possible for me to do that. I could, you know, throw away my footage if need be, and I can go back a day or two days or three days later and do something again. And I'm not feeling like... The important thing is that I'm not feeling like, oh, well, if I don't do it now, then what's going to happen is... Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lose all my motivation because work is gonna stress me out, right? So, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the video toaster video is very much a it'll be done when it's done thing, but I'm hoping, hoping February. Uh, I think that's I'm hoping February. For January, I have a couple things planned. Uh, one thing I was thinking about is uh, this this situation here. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking about doing this video about Windows Media Player skins <laughs> um, which uh, which seems pretty uh, it <laughs> sorry let me <laughs> we need a clear field here <laughs> that's robbie williams by the way uh well you might not recognize him like this uh what if i what if you saw him like this i'm sorry i should have given people a warning it's like a terrifying body horror thing this is a terrifying body horror thing if you didn't look away already you could look away now yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so, <laughs> RobbieWilliams.com, <laughs> uh, 
The uh, I need to point out that there's no controls on here whatsoever. None of this does anything when his head is closed, other than the volume control. You can't play or pause or anything. Um, uh, right, 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 right. Give me a second. I just need to um, paste a file in here. Where is my date modified? Oh, right, right, right. It has to be drag and drop. Uh, come on, virtual box drag and drop integration. Can't you be just a little bit more convenient? I mean, the fact I can drag and drop into a fucking VM is already completely crazy. Oh, no? There we go. Uh, oh, this actually just uh, turns off the skin entirely. But yeah, so um, this is it. This is the player. We can expand him. Here's our play pause. If we want a visualizer, there it is. It's his ear. Does this make sense? Okay, so here's the thing. That's not what I intended to do. I have a hundred and eighty of these. I downloaded a collection, and they are buck-fucking-wild. This happens every single time you start your media player. And then, like, these are the controls. These are live, right? So for the volume, you've got to actually follow this curve here. Or you can, you can turn the knob, right? Uh, and uh, my favorite part is that none of these integrate any of, like, the viz or the... the, the this part, they always have to split them off into other windows because, like, it obviously does not make a whole lot of sense what they're doing here. And so, like, this literally, you can't fit the whole UI on one screen, right? It's so bad. But at least you can close the music crab, you know? Um, and then if you want to so much as, as hit pause... Right? Like, and the thing is, that this is it, um, oh, I don't know, 800 by 530, that's a virtual box thing. Um, there we go. This is an 800 by goddamn 600, and it takes up the whole screen. At 1024, it is a bit more, um, now, that's not 1024. Now, that's not 1024. Virtual box, you need to knock it off. Yeah, 1024 by 534, go to hell. Uh, one moment. Re uh, scale to 150%. One moment, please. There we go. Uh, there we are. Uh, 1024 by 768. Uh, still doesn't really fit. Like... Oh, and of course, like, most of this is not grabbable. Oh, okay, that part is. But, like, that's a control. That's a control. That's a fucking button to visit alienware.com so you're pixel hunting to just to yeah this this takes up like a good two-thirds of your damn display okay and yeah exactly no everybody was on 1024 back then even some of the nerds 
This is actually not that absurd. This one is exactly what it looks like. This part, this does nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It does nothing. You can't see, like, the visualizations there or anything. There's the equalizer. Barely fits in 1024. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. This is good. The Age of Empires one. This at least has a visualizer. But yeah, that's, there it is. What even is this drag bar here? Like... Oh, and of course, like, none of the icons mean anything. It's all mystery beat navigation. So you've got to roll over things. Okay, that's the audio controls. That's the playlist. Oh, and it all gets squeezed in there? Oh, delightful. Delightful. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. How about this one? So... Has anybody here ever heard of MediaBay.com? I had not. And it's really hard to find any information about them. They appear to have been an audiobook company. That is Isaac Asimov's head. I have no idea why. I couldn't find any info on their website explaining any connection to Isaac Asimov. Um, you can make the head go up and down, but you can't do it by just clicking here, or by clicking there, or by just clicking anywhere on this orb. You have to hit specifically the arrow. Just the upper arrow. It's not a toggle. Um, and the thing is, as bad as this is, Yeah, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate this without changing tracks. So, this is how it implements the video player. It expands. And the problem is that it now will not fit on your screen at uh, 1024 by 768. You can shrink the head, and then it will. But if you're running 800 by 600, you literally can't... Well, it's a pain in the ass to change that. If you're running 800 by 600, you literally can't... You can't fit, it's like, it cuts off like here. And there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, now, the strangest thing about this is that this is not intended as an audio player. In fact, you may notice that there is a preset control here. That actually works. And what it does is it attempts to tune in an internet radio station. Because you see, these here are links to this company's internet radio stations. They were running several of them. And a couple of them are full-length video feature. So when you click that, that would open the video player. So that means that their intended function, their intended use case for this for this thing um, would not fit on 800 by 600 display. And to impose that limitation on people in like 2001 is wild absolutely just wild that they would be that uh uh just just uh uh hubristic okay there's the beck one uh uh mm. All that, and as soon as you want to play a video, half the purpose of Windows Media Player, it just opens another fucking window and puts it over the top of it. With yet another window that pops out of that. Which, for some reason, has... Yeah, sure, color controls. You know, which none of the other skins have. 
Brute Force. What the fuck was Brute Force? I've never heard of this game. Is this a game? Um. And then, yeah, I guess... Yeah. There's the controls. So it's just like all of these things are just, here's a JPEG, and then there's like a really crappy minimalist mock-up of a media player below it with Mystery Meat Navigation. This is the Seek Bar. You see this? This is the Seek Bar. That's the volume control. Oh, and you can't just grab anywhere on it because the mute is down here at the bottom. So if you try and grab down here, you can you can miss it. You know. Um, and look, you can't really tell the difference between 80% and 100% because it's so close together. Right? Right? This will be an hour plus video. I'm gonna I've got 180 of these. I'm not covering all of them. Um Good morning. Good morning, Angels. This one unfortunately does not fully work. Um Yeah, I think I need to run this specifically in WMP seven. This is version eleven, I think, and it's uh it's just Yeah. And for some reason, just like clicking on it will randomly start playing. It's like the whole thing is the play button. That one's just broken, though. That's 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 mean. You know, that's just uh, that's not its fault. It's running on the wrong version of the of the software. Um, oh, please tell me it's Square. Oh, it's not Square. I really hoped it was, but this is just as bad, really. And then yeah, so there's the seek control, right? There's the seek control, and then that's the volume. Which I should note is labeled zero to forty-five, even though the actual number is zero to one hundred. I do have Windows Me installed. I just don't have all the uh, um, all the uh, skins loaded into it yet. <sighs> Let me find. Hang on. Um, it's the fucking Crimson Skies one. Yeah. Uh, Davinci. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, ah, right, there we go. Every time you start it, it plays that. And then it's just this PNG file with a crappy media player stuck to the top of it. A tiny seek bar, right? Elvis. 30 number one hits. I mean, it's just... You know, like the gingerbread man is useless. Like he doesn't do anything. Like all this over here, no, none of this does anything. You have to interact with the orb. And again, if your mouse slips off the tiny little bar, it stops tracking. So that's the seek bar. That's the volume bar. You can't actually make out the symbol on the next button, right? It's too vague, you know? And then, of course, they just have to stick everything else in separate windows. Yeah, exactly. You know, your 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 grandma gets into this mode. She can't figure out how to, you know... You know. Every time they got asked to make one out of a person's, like, about a person, it was always the ears opening up. And you know what? You know what? Now that I think of it... Oh, barely. Just barely. Just barely. You know? I don't, you know, you know, it's, it's just, it's just more stuff moving on your screen. Um, you know, and, and like, you know, it looks cool, but like, is there really anything Half-Life 2 about this other than the fucking orange, you know? So, and of course, separate windows for everything, because you can't, 
There's no room in this UI to do anything. Um, Halo 2. Um, this is the one everyone knows. You know, this is the usual joke. You know, but the thing is, like, as much as I want to make fun of this, at least it puts the Viz on his head. And I believe if we play cat.mpeg, okay, well, all right, that sucks. It sucks that it's cropped. You know, but you know, you know, what can you do? Um, what else did I have? What else did I have? Like, this, these things are really bad, you know. I mean... It's just an actual car stereo. For, for for over 10 years, whenever I talk about how bad skeuomorphism is, um, I use a car stereo as an example of just a truly atrocious and unsalvageable example of a user interface. You have to overload far too many functions into too small a space. You just cannot fit it into this space. It's a space that was designed for an AM, FM radio, or even just an AM radio, you know, some Germans came up with this set of dimensions when they were fit, trying to fit in nothing more than five preset buttons, a dial, and two knobs. And, like, as a result, this looks, this is just a mess, right? Like, look at this. This is the equalizer button. This little tiny wedge down here that's illegible because they had to s skew the, the symbol over, right? So, you like, it's visually, you know, and... Uh, 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 I don't even know how this... How does this play video? Can this play video? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, of course. It just opens this window. That it, it, here's the thing, okay? Let me just illustrate something to you. Switch to full mode, okay? Library. No. Uh, Not this one. Hang on. Where the fuck? God damn it. File. Here we go. We are playing an MP3. Okay? Now, we're going to play cat.mpeg. Now, do you notice how it scaled the video to fit my screen? None of these do that. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. When you start playing a video, does this. It makes a window that's bigger than your screen. So you have to know that you can grab this little tiny lip at the edge to move it around, and you have to know... No, actually, you know what? Yeah, you, there's no grab bars anywhere. So you have to know that you can pull the window up this way. Oh, you know, oh, if it was just a little bit bigger, we wouldn't actually be able to access the resize handle at all. Right? Right? But there's a button that goes to their fucking website. And there's, yeah, here's the settings, which, again, don't fit on the damn screen. Right? Like, this is bad. It's just bad. And, um... The other thing is that uh, nobody cares because the purpose of this is actually to be an advertisement. Because it turns out you can put anything in here. So there's just whole fucking pamphlets. There's whole web pages. Little flash videos. Oh gosh, an ad for the music keg! I've been thinking of buying a music keg for some time. Click here for more information. Um, Sirius Satellite Radio, fucking, um, about the KDC X959. This has an organic electroluminescent display. Wow. Amazing. Page after page after page of this shit. Here's some links. You know? Um, it just, it's an ad. The purpose of this is to be an ad. And, um, so here's the thing you gotta understand. I want to point something out. This is made by theskinsfactory.com. This is made by theskinsfactory.com. Oh. This is made by theskinsfactory. The Skins Factory. Not that one. Uh, that one also is an EMI parlophone. Uh, let's see. Theskinsfactory.com. The Skins Factory. Salt Mine, which is. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's actually another one. Uh, the Skins Factory. The Skins Factory. The Skins Factory. Uh, the Skins Factory, uh, the Skins Factory, uh, Skinworks, which is the previous name of the Skins Factory, the Skins Factory, uh, the Skins Factory, um, 
Uh, skins factory. Um, the skins factory. <laughs> the skins factory. Um, the skins factory. Uh, the skins factory. I uh, did that one. Oh, this one's by the skins factory. The skins factory. <laughs> Skin works. The previous name of the skins factory. The skins factory. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, it turns out one guy is responsible for so much destruction. Um, an enormous number of these, uh, overwhelmingly, more than, than two-thirds of them are made by the Skins Factory. It's actually several guys. Um, but he, uh, he did the default skin for Windows Media Player 9. He did one of the default skins for Sonic. He did the default skin for X-Fire, circa 2005, when everyone started using that. He did the Windows Vista sidebar gadgets. He did everything. And it all looks fucking absurd. I don't need to interview this guy. He interviewed himself. Just look up the Skins Factory Windows Media Player. He wrote two blog posts about the entire history of the company and everything they did. And there is an incredible quote. There is an incredible quote that I need to read to you. <clears throat> My main focus with Skinworks was to go after the record labels and get them to buy into the idea of custom media player skins as a new way to digitally market their recording artists. Branded skins, in my opinion, were the ultimate, ultimate digital marketing tool, as it was always opt-in by the consumer. The consumer had to voluntarily download and install the skin, and then it would sit on the Windows desktop while the user was listening to music or watching a video. It amounted to what was basically an interactive advertisement that the user sought out and embraced willingly. I think this post is from this year. I think it's from um, February. I'm sorry, last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he posted that like February last year. So, um, you know. You know. Hmm. All right, let me show you the best one. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is the best one. This is Pharaoh. <laughs> I'm using this song because I think it won't get copyright struck. Um, this is the volume on the side of the, f of the pedestal. These are the back and forward buttons. The X is this little tiny crushed thing over here. And you know what? If this is taking up too much space in your desktop, no worries. Scarab mode. <laughs> Scarab mode, you know. Simply scarab mode. When you want a program to be small, you put it in scarab mode. That's known. This is how programs work. Also, all the holes are actual holes. So if you click on them, that's never happened before. It, it stopped being transparent. If you click on them, it's not a... You can't you can't hit it. So there's only like a 20% chance if you try to drag this thing. Because you can't drag from the, from the... Oh, you can drag from the controls. Oh, they thought of that. Okay, I hadn't noticed that before. Anyway. Um... To return to, to... Click the gem to return to Sphinx mode. Yeah. Uh, optic, yeah. Uh, portals. So... It looks like Riven if Presto Studios made it. When you hit play, it just starts displaying this ripple here. But if you click it, you get the viz. But if you click it again, you just get this ad for the pedestal magazine. <laughs> anyway, um, this is the seek bar. This thing right here. 
this is the seek bar. Now you may notice something about this. There's no stop. Where's zero? Where does it begin? Don't know. They didn't tell you. I think it's there. And then this is the volume control. And again, if you slip off of it just a little bit, it won't. And also, due to the ex like, due to the the skeuomorphismosity attitude, uh, the they decided that there should be a, a sharp light coming, a sharp shadow from the light coming from the upper left. And that means that the red portion of the volume dial is just like hidden, so you can't really see that it's. I mean, it's just. <sighs> You know, you know, you just, um, I realize you all are sitting over there just like, oh, it looks great, man. It looks like dog shit. All of these look like dog shit. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going like, yeah, I would like, oh yeah, dudes rock. Very funny. I lol also, but these look like dog shit and they're not usable. They don't look good and they are extremely confusing and I hate them. This is what a program should look like. This is what every program should look like. And I will ride this until I die. This is how God intended programs to look. And I'm making a, pro a video about how Winamp is better. Um, when you play cat.mpeg, it does appear over there. So the, this, this is how I watch shit on my computer. This here, I'm fuck I'm going to fucking I'm watching Mad Max Fury Road like this. New year, new Gravis. Fuck being able to see what's going on. <laughs> this is the shit. This is what we're doing. Um none of that matters. None of it's what we came here for. Info mode. <laughs> <laughs> like, who do you suppose would even go so far as do go decided to look more like? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like. God damn it, that's not what I wanted. Hang on, we gotta drop. There we go. It's 26 pages in here of poetry. <laughs> also some interviews with writers <laughs> this whole thing's an ad for the pedestal magazine a poetry magazine that still exists and it's still run by the same people oh there's some art in here also <laughs> there's just some art <laughs> um submission guidelines this is how much they pay 30 to 60 dollars per poem And then uh, here's all their email addresses. So I emailed John Amon uh, yesterday, and I asked him, uh, do you remember commissioning this from the Skins Factory? Because, of course, it's a Skins Factory joint. And is this what you asked for? <laughs> or did they just do it? And I'm hoping he gets back to me.
There it is. There it is. You can't drag on this part. You gotta drag there. There are no normal skins. They are all like this. Shit, how's this supposed to work? These gears don't make any sense. Anime mech titties. Did you know that new Super Mario Brothers is 20 years old? I did not. The front of the skateboard is a permanent ad for Livin' It, <clears throat> a Christian skateboarding movie that mixes skate videos uh, with a message about life. Bro. 
probably about how you should stop being gay as soon as possible, I'd guess. It's fucking Christian propaganda. So, uh... Yeah, the player is a skateboard wheel. I think that's true, now that you mention it. Greetings, fellow kids. All these things are ads. Ads are intrinsically disgusting. Uh, and the difference... I will tell you this. The difference between... A Windows Media Player skin and a Winamp skin is very simply this. If I go to the Winamp skin archive and I type in Neon Genesis Evangelion, I get like 50 skins. If I type in Ava, I get like 500 because an awful lot of them were just fucking... They typed Ava.zip and that was it. Uh... If I type in the matrix, there are about 5,000. Because every goddamn dipshit using their personal computer thought, Hey, the matrix is pretty cool. I should make my Winamp look like that. And then they opened up the skins folder and there was a BMP. And they opened that and they pasted, they pasted a picture of Neo onto it. And that was their skin. And then they shared it. That was probably the reason they learned how to use their stolen copy of Photoshop to make text with drop shadows. There are no advertisements in the world of Winamp skins. There is only people being dorks. And I respect that. I can... Sure, you know, maybe somebody's way too excited about the Matrix... Sure, they're doing free advertising for it, but there's only so much we can do about that. You know? But I think that every... I think there were official Winamp skins, but nothing that anybody paid money for. Bob, in accounting, who knows how to use Photoshop, I think, got asked, like, hey, can you whip something up? And that was it. You know? But... Like, <laughs> uh, this is all corporate art, and it's mostly from one corporation. And I just can't get on. I just can't get on board with that. You know, like it's too complex. Like, is it cool? Sure. Is it made by like a fairly small set of guys that you know were getting paid to do what they love? Absolutely. I read the guy's blog post. He didn't do it like this because it made the most money. He did it like this because he liked it. But he did still do it for money. <laughs> for anybody who would pay. And you can taste it. <sighs> to wit... Nobody at the fucking Skins Factory ever figured out... Excuse me, I'm sorry. Could you really not figure out how to fit a video into this? It's square. You motherfucker. I have not attempted to contact the fellow from the Skins Factory because I don't like his work very much and I have nothing nice to say to him and so I am not going to... <laughs> Once in a while I do think to myself... Hey, wouldn't it be cool if I emailed these guys? And then I'm like, yeah, I get a phone call one day, and I pick up, and I'm like, yo, this is Cathode Ray, dude. This is Gravis. And they go, hey, remember those videos you made back in 2018? They sucked shit. And you, you're you terrible, man. Everyone hates you. Uh, would you like to talk about how you became detestable? And I'd be like, well, I would be like, yes, <laughs> definitely, but <laughs> at least some of them don't fucking make noise. I'm sorry. I just like, 
Are they beautiful? Yes. Are they usable? Absolutely not. Every fucking last one of these things, just like, oh, where's the volume? Oh, shit, I need to change the volume. Uh, uh, is it this? No, that's the goddamn seek bar, right? But there's like this line here and this line here. Your brain projects those across, right? So it's, it's like it's like a goddamn optical illusion chart, you know? Like it's designed to confuse you. You know, for me, I'm sitting here going, okay, the top of the volume graph is uh, scale is there, and the bottom is there. No, the bottom is there. This is bad design. Does it look cool? Did dudes rock? Sure. But it doesn't change the fact that from a UX perspective, which is very important to me, I would say... Why is it... Why is the video so fucking small? What happened? Why is there a control for setting the drawer... <laughs> the speed of the drawer. You can make it real slow. Why? Why? What's it look like when it's fast? <laughs> no, there's this little drawer. Just two, just two, but what do they do? Oh, is that the damn volume? Oh, now, okay, now look at this. Look, look at this. They've integrated the visualizer into the fucking screen. That looks amazing. This is worth it. Almost. God. Metadata location toggle. Metadata location toggle. I don't know if that's correct. Um. So yeah. That's the idea for the next video. That's the idea for the next video. Um. Byte audio. I don't remember. There was somebody that uh, Skins Factory did work for, I believe. Uh, everyone, give me a moment. I need another. M m m I need another m m m mimosa.
I pressed the mic mute button. God damn it. Anyway, I'm eating cherry pie. I will not make you listen to my mouth sounds. Um, but, uh, uh, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be streaming, but I am going to play a little bit more Solar Winds because I'd really like you to see this game if you haven't. <clears throat> uh, God damn it. I see. So I was going to say, uh, so this is, a this is a game I, I think about a lot. It has a two scale galaxy where if you want to get from coordinate minus 28, six to coordinate 1050 by 600, you just have to drive there and all the upgrades you get for like your engines just make you go faster linearly. There's no warp. Uh, in fact, the entire plot of the game is about how there's no warp. Uh, this isn't even a spoiler, I think, uh, because uh, in reality, um, oh, okay. Uh, in reality, uh, uh, what's going on is that everybody who's living in this galaxy uh, is actually sort of like a Truman Show experiment, uh, and there's like a barrier at the edge of the galaxy. And there's aliens outside that are artificially keeping them from ever gaining uh, warp technology, so they can explore the actual universe. I'm really curious where the fuck that goes, right? But so, what's interesting about this to me? This game starts out by telling you, yeah, there's a planet at uh, sector 1055 by 996. It's interesting. We just think it's interesting. If you just drive there, it takes like a week real time. It takes eons. But you can get there and like the end of the game is there. I don't remember if you, I don't remember if you could actually like actually finish it that way. Um... Or if there's something more to it, but like you could go there and talk to the people. The planet's there. The whole galaxy exists right now, and it's all designed. It's not like a, a roguelike um, sort of thing. It's not like a, a freaking Elder Scrolls, you know. Uh, there's planets dotted all over the galaxy, and people, design, a designer, put them there, and you could just go there if you know they're there. So it's a, it's an information based game like Tunic, um, where if you know things at the beginning of the game that you aren't supposed to know until later you can conceivably uh, just skip chunks of it, which is wild. Um, but otherwise, it's all like, you can see it's got like a technical thing going on, right? We've got um, energy levels for all of our different systems. And as you upgrade your systems, those don't just go all the way to the top of the bar. They then loop around and go up again and then again. So you start out with your engines at like, you know, 5% of their maximum but then by the end of the game, they're at like 600%. But then you have to balance all this on the fly. You like go to the engineering system and you get move stuff around to, you know, like X-Wing, right? You shift your shields over to your to your engines, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's it's sort of like Elite, except I didn't think that Elite had... Does Elite have any kind of, of story? I couldn't remember. I don't think it has an end, right? So this guy tells you that, uh, you know, he's just here to talk shit on you. Um, but he does mention that, yeah, there's rebels. There's rebels here. And your guy's like, rebels? Huh? <laughs> so you sort of find out right away, as soon as you jump in, that uh, there's some shit going on in this galaxy you're about to start learning about. Um, and then this guy just leaves. All right? Yeah, there's no game audio until you finish that. And then, uh, yeah, so there's there's that. So we got missiles. We got little lasers. Right? And then, um, there we go. So go to sector minus 31-1. Okay. I can't remember why I'm going to minus 31 1.
Oh, right. And then um, if you hit Z, you zoom out to like the star system and then multiple star systems. And you can, uh, this is necessary for like interstellar travel. Okay. I don't remember why we're going here, but uh, we go down, we talk to this guy. Oh, right. This is the guy he talked to in the intro. A man such as me. So the first thing you get is like, and and so this is sort of like a Metroidvania kind of thing in the sense that over the course of the game, this this is a thing that, that, that I think about a lot with regards to like the Metroidvania genre. A thing that makes it very special that often doesn't exist nearly as strongly in a lot of other genres is the acquisition of items that permanently upgrade your abilities to do stuff. Like, um, pardon me, the, you know, the classic, you know, example being like in, in like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you get, I think it's boots that let you like just shoot upwards and land on the ceiling, right? That's not an upgrade to an ability you have. That is an ability that for the first 30 hours of the game, you didn't have at all. And, you know, it breaks the game completely when you get it, right? It's the, It becomes a different game. Okay, so, for instance, uh, this is at a much lower scale, but it's still something that, that just often does not happen in a lot of games. One of the very first things that happens here is this guy's like, yeah, uh, go do this job for me, and then I'm going to give you a thing that uh, anytime you blow up another ship, this thing is going to convert it into, uh, uh, this ship's going to recharge your, your shields, right? This is really early in the game to just dump a, uh, an ability upgrade on you like that, right? But it's stuff that you continue to get stuff like this throughout throughout the game. I haven't played that far into it, but um, neat. I want to play a space game where my ship gets permanent upgrades. Put a little check on that. Anyway, uh, so uh, I will accept the mission. Nightwheel, thank you. I already have two ZX Spectrums, actually. <laughs> I appreciate it, though. So yeah, we've got, uh, we do have a, a cargo uh, thing. This is not a space truck simulator, but we do have a, a, a oh wait, whoops. We do have a cargo interface and, um, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Um, here we go. So I really like the power distribution system, right? Because it's just the letters, um, RT, Y, up, and then the ones below them, right? So you send your, uh, send your weapons down with that, send them up with that and so on. Uh, but then also you've got like the the Star Trek uh, shield remodulation business, right? So different things in the game, you get all these shield modulations um, that are for resisting different kinds of uh, different kinds of damage. Uh, and likewise, you've got yourself; you could remodulate your weapons as well. So definitely like very Star Trek inspired, uh, and it actually has a mission. Uh, it actually has an objective screen, a journal. So many games in this era didn't. You just had to write stuff down. You had to remember. Oh, sorry, Nightwheel. I misread. Um, I'm still not terribly interested in the next, I'm afraid. Uh, long story, but I appreciate it, though.
Oh my god, I don't know how long I've been on mute. Well, anyway, you get the gist of it. Uh, I'm going over to... Uh, I'm just going over to uh, where this guy is. There's a whole... Uh, there's a whole, uh, there's a whole like uh, game after this. You know, you get the picture. You go, you talk to people, you do missions. There's like different ways to approach stuff. This guy, I'm gonna go see here. I could kill him, or I can uh, help him perform a ruse, so I can like go back and um, convince the guy that I killed him when he actually didn't. It's a whole ass RPG. You got random encounters. There's just guys out here you could fight actually kind of a bummer that I took all the uh, juice out of my shields. Anyway, it bugs the shit out of me that I've never seen another game like this. Just never seen anything like it. You know? Of all the many things that get made, um, I, uh, I've just never seen anybody attempt to do this again. And uh, whenever I think about shmups and how much I wish I liked them more, this is what I think about. It's obviously not a shmup. But, I don't know, I think that a uh, little spaceship fights all the other little spaceships can have greater depth to it. And uh, I think that this guy successfully, I, th I assume this was made by one person. Um, I, think this is, I think this proved it. You can see it's got the RPG elements, and, and that's really all you need. Um, like, I keep thinking, like, man, what if I sat down and tried to make my own game like this? But I know how much effort it takes to make a, uh, make a video game. Anyway... Hmm. I'm trying to think if I want to do anything else or just uh, quit for the night. I did it. I uh, I have successfully made it to the new year. <sighs> Here, let me see. Uh really curious yep uh solar winds was made entirely by one person except for the music it's exactly what i figured <laughs> um it's the sort of thing that like it's just such a novel idea that i can't really see i can't really see it getting made by a team or a a, a company or a studio it's something i can i can only imagine somebody sitting around and just putting together you know bit by bit on their own um because, I don't know, try, imagine, tr imagine explaining that to somebody in 1993, somebody who's never even played, like, Final Fantasy 3, you know, um, I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any fireworks simulators, not in this collection, but maybe, let's see, no, there aren't, damn, bummer, well, I guess that's that, then, although, what is Firewall Man versus, oh, is this a, this is probably a, uh, this is probably, this looks like a rail shooter, isn't it? This is a damn rail shooter. I got excited for a moment. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take for the night. I just realized I'm running out of energy. You would probably tell my mind wandered. Um, but that's fine. Uh. Happy Merry New Year, Miss. Uh, I'll toast my non-alcoholic mimosa. Um, thank you all. It's been great. Um, I hope this year is better than the last one in several ways. I'll put it that way. Oh. <sighs> Have a good one, everyone.